The eyes of Texas are back upon us as a new season begins. Expectations are always high on the 40 acres as quarterback Colt McCoy leads an experienced and explosive offense. A hard-hitting defense will always keep Coach Mack Brown thrilled. It's time to kick off a new season in Austin and beyond. Texas takes on Florida Atlantic as the college football season kicks off next. to College Football Saturday from Austin, Texas on the campus of the University of Texas. It's the season opener and the Longhorn fans are ready. Rolling into Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, the season opener. The Florida Atlantic Owls, winners of the Sun Belt Conference a year ago, take on the 11th ranked team in the country, the Texas Longhorns. Welcome everyone, Bill Land, Gary Reasons, glad to have you with us, and isn't it great to have another college football season underway? This place is jumping, Gary, because of the pregame activities with the retirement of Vince Young's jersey, number 10, will be worn no more. A very emotional setting with Coach Mack Brown. And he did it right. I tell you, just have a great legacy. The winningest co quarterback in Texas history, Vince Young, and a national championship to boot. That's a great way to go out. We'll have a chance to show you that ceremony at halftime. Make sure you stay with us for that. Now let's get to the season opener, Texas and Florida Atlantic. Speaking of great quarterbacks, Texas returns one in Colt McCoy. They may retire his number someday, the numbers he's been putting up. Well, he's going to be the all-time leader when he's done. Colt McCoy's had a tremendous campaign. Just his junior season now, look at the numbers so far, six all-time. He's going to continue to move up the charts. Kind of a subpar season last year, believe it or not, just because of injury problems, but I think he'll have another breakout year this season. Yeah, hard to say subpar when a team wins 10 ball games, but the standard is very high here at the University of Texas. If they had a big concern, it was defensively. New defensive coordinator Will Muschamp might be the answer. He comes from Auburn, had great defenses there. He's already putting his stamp here. Well, he's an aggressive guy. He's a smart guy. He's a guy that really is going to ener energize, I think, this defense, and he hopes to get some success there. They had some problems a year ago, did not play the kind of defense that Mac Brown would like to play, and so he made some changes, and he thinks that Will is going to be the, be the guy that he gets that going right. Now, the biggest player for him on defense is going to be Brian Arakpo. Big defensive end. A little struggle last year. Had a knee injury that sidelined him for part of the season. But he's a big play weapon on the outside. He'll put pressure on quarterbacks for Will Muschamp. And if he has a good season, it could be a great season for the Longhorn defense. And that defense will get a test tonight because this Florida Atlantic team can score. They've got an outstanding quarterback in Rusty Smith, who was the Sun Belt Player of the Year last season. Well, Rusty Smith, he's got all the tools. He's big, Bill. He's 6'5", 230 pounds. He's got a good delivery. Kind of looks like, you know, some of the NFL quarterback bodies that are out there. He's the kind of guy that you want to lead your football team. Last year, 36 touchdowns, only five interceptions. So that's a pretty good ratio to work with. He's got big receivers to throw to. Going to challenge this young secondary for the Longhorns. It's an interesting matchup, especially for a season opener. We look forward to bringing you to it on College Football Saturday. It is Texas and Florida Atlantic. Stay with us. Is the University of Texas at Austin so special? Is it the academics? The rich cultural diversity? Is it the open minds and curious thinkers that inspire self-discovery? Yes. What starts here changes the world. Want to see your Big 12? Tonight's game is brought to you by Time Warner, the power of you. And welcome as we are set for the kickoff here on College Football Saturday, Texas and Florida Atlantic. Bill Land, as well as Gary Reasons, will get to our sideline man, Ahmad Brooks, in just a moment. But we're about ready to kick it off 
as Justin Tucker is set. There's Howard Schnellenberger, the veteran, and I do mean veteran coach, 74 years young, as he has done so much in college football, including a national title back in 83 at Miami, was at Louisville, Oklahoma for a year, and literally has built this Florida Atlantic program from the ground up. I tell you, it's been a great job of him and Mac Brown, what he's done at this university. Un unbelievable the success that Mac has had here, including a national championship. And the kickoff. Oh, boy, out of bounds. Out of bounds. Well, that goes down to the 40-yard line. New rule this year. Ball kicked out of bounds on the kickoff. And as a result, Florida Atlantic comes Free up with... Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball replaced at the 40-yard line. First down. Excellent field position to start things off. As Rusty Smith, the quarterback is a junior. He's 6'5", 230 out of Jacksonville, Florida, Sandalwood High School, and last year, what a year. Sun Belt Player of the Year as a sophomore with 32 touchdowns and just nine interceptions. Yeah, it's a pretty good ratio, and he's a good big guy back there. And you take a look at the offensive line, they're just going to be protecting him. Important pressure for the center to step up. Got to change there. And these receivers, they've got some big play players outside. Gent there going to be the leading receiver for him. Starting lineups brought to you by Time Warner, the power of you. And on the first frame, the defense is up to the challenge with the stop on the play as the Ivory Edgecombe, the redshirt senior out of Miami, is stopped 5'10", 195. And again, starting lineups as we look at the defensive side are brought to you by Time Warner, the power of you. The Longhorns are hoping for the veteran push up front with Arakpo, Miller, Houston, and Melton. The linebackers certainly solid and more with Kendall Bobino and McElroy. And then in the secondary, there are the youngsters there. You see those two true freshmen. And this one goes to the 48-yard line. And Gent, the receiver. Bill, you talked about the freshmen. And that's the big question mark about the Longhorn defense right now is how will those young guys back there turn out? And, you know, they just here, haven't been here very long. Someone, you got a redshirt freshman back there starting at safety and also a true freshman, Blake Gordon and Earl Thomas. Those two are, Blake Gideon, excuse me, getting, getting after it out there. So Will Muschamp is hoping they can play well in their debut. Yeah, Gideon is the true freshman and Thomas the redshirt freshman. Third and three for the Owls. Play action and complete for the first down and then some. Into Texas territory. Ball is fumbled, but they're ruling it down. They're ruling it down back at the 32-yard line or out of bounds. William Rose, the receiver, they love to throw to their backs. Rose last year had 38 receptions. Well, watch the play action fake here. Good job. Looked like they're going to run it inside, but he tosses it over the top. Play action fake. Gets outside, and then the tackle here at the edge. Ball knocked loose after he's down. Probably a good call there by the officials, but a big first down with great field position to start the ball game for the Florida Atlantic Owls. A pickup of 22 yards and a first and 10. Yeah, they're going to look at that. Yep. You know, there's a new rule in college football, Bill. The previous play is being reviewed. And that is if there is a fumble at the at a play like that, at the end of the play, and it is immediately recovered by the defensive team, and they'll look back at it if that ball was coming out, even though they were called down by contact, that can be turned over. That can be uh, reviewed, and that's what they're looking at here. We're going to take another look at it to see on the sideline. Now, does he maintain control all the way to the ground? It's hard to tell on that shot. It looks like the leg, one of his teammates might have come in there, and then the ball is recovered by Texas. So there's a chance that the Longhorns may get this ball back after the review. It has to be a fumble, declare a uh, uh, a fumble that is already seen, and then an immediate recovery as the Longhorns recover that one. And we're told by the replay crew is they visit with our truck folks to provide them with every shot they possibly can. They are only concerned with the fumble, not, you might have thought originally, maybe he was out of bounds. That is not a concern. It's only whether he fumbled the football or not. Yeah, we, from the sideline view from our side, we're looking at it the same way that the fans are at home. We, we don't have that reverse shot. I'm not sure that we have that. I don't know that there's enough there that I see that that's going to be called a fumble. Not here we go. This might be a better yeah. look at it for us. We'll take a look at it. See the right arm in there and the left arm, and then his teammate comes in. And After the review, the ruling on the field stands. Yep. First down. Well, they didn't wait long there. Well, that's one of the things I think as we get further into years and years of replay, 
everybody's better at their job. Sure. And the one thing they don't want to do is take forever and keep this game moving. So, Texas in a bit of trouble right from the get-go here. Howard Schnellberger looking on as this club a first and 10 at the 31. Smith. Play action again. Good protection, deep and incomplete. Intended in the end zone and covering the play was Blake Gideon. So he tests that young secondary. Yeah, trying to use his all time, his leading receiver, Cortez Gann, on the outside. Watching her come down. He's going to try to get behind the safety there. Ball just a little bit thrown. And good coverage in the secondary by the Longhorns. Gideon, the safety coming over, like you said, Bill. And he's a true freshman. Just uh, did the right job there playing two deep zone coverage. Couldn't quite connect with Cortez Jemp, a junior out of Cheapland, Florida. Second and ten. Smith hands it off this time. Nothing doing. Longhorns taking care of business as Jockey Brown, sophomore out of Houston from North Shore, along with McElroy, making the tackle. And the clock, new clock this, this, this time is already running. Sets at 40 seconds when the play ends. That's actually the start of the 40-second clock. You know, one of the things we're looking at in this game, Bill, with Florida Atlantic and Texas is actually the size difference. The Florida Atlantic Owls, their offensive linemen, are not the big monsters that you have in the Big 12 Conference. Some of them are 270, 280 across the board there. And the defensive front for Texas, very athletic and very strong inside, especially with Roy Miller and Lamar Houston. Third and 10, Smith. In a bit of trouble. Fires got a man and it's complete for a first down as Chris Bonner makes the reception. A junior out of Tampa, Florida, who had 37 receptions a year ago and scored three times. Ryan Palmer makes the stop for Texas. Well, good play that time in the backfield. They allow this line to slide, protect, and take their back. William Rose to block on the outside. Watch on the right side, the left side of the screen. The fullback goes out. Good block there on Kendall, who's on the outside. Can't get to the quarterback. And a nice delivery there by Rusty Smith outside in Florida Atlantic. They've got some tools and weapons. They've won, won the championship in the Sun Belt last year, and Howard Snellenberger likes to continue things here again in 2008. A 15-yard pickup on that play, and this time Smith now three of five after Gideon applied the big-time hit. They were not fooled on that play by the hour. You know, one thing that I've seen with Texas defenses over the years, doesn't matter who's out there and who's playing, is one thing that Matt Brown wants to have on his defensive team is speed. They're going to bring speed on the field, and they're going to find the right combination of players. And when you go a lateral game against the Longhorns, it typically isn't a good game plan. You've got to go right at these guys because a lateral game plan allows that speed to catch up to where you're putting the football. And Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator, his first game here at Texas and putting his own design on. One thing about Florida Atlantic, they will try to do everything they can oh to boy. protect the quarterback, but you can't protect against a bad snap. And Texas has recovered the football at the 38-yard line. Sergio Kendall comes up for the fumble recovery. Wow, well, the snap over his head, and wow, huge play there. Texas just rushing the quarterback there, and it's just going to be a quick snap over the top there. Matt Locks snapping the ball over Rusty Smith's head, and an errant throw and trying to get out very quick. And then Kendall on the outside just... Getting to the football before the quarterback can. Kendall, a junior out of Dallas. Woodrow Wilson High School, 32 tackles a year ago. Played in eight games for the Longhorns. And now Texas gets its hands on the football for the first time at the 39-yard line. We'll give you the lineups here in a moment as Colt McCoy. And they also had John Childs in the game is that correct? To start things with, I believe. Starting lineups are brought to you by Time Warner, the power of you. There's Colts' numbers last year. Yeah, they want to get that number down a little bit. 18 interceptions on the season. He needs to be a little more cautious with the football. Had some, had some things tipped and go against him, but overall, they want to get him to be a little more efficient, get a better touchdown-interception ratio. And the offensive line, Ulatowski, Tanner, as well as Chris Hall, who played all five positions last year, Dockery and Hicks. A lot of experience with the O-line here at, at Texas. McGee with the carry. Boy, showing some power there. Vondrell McGee, a sophomore out of Tyler Longview, and Michael Hancock drags him down. And a chance to take a look at that Florida Atlantic lineup as well in just a moment. 
quick start here as Fort Atlantic is knocking on the door, turned it over, and now their defensive group has to answer. Give Time Warner provides you the starting lineup, the power of you, Council Jackson Savage, and the Hancock up front, Clark, Franz Joseph, and George Allen are the linebackers. Joseph of 131 tackles to lead the league last year. Pass is complete over the middle near a first down. Joseph and Allen covering on the play to McGee. A very comfortable start here for Texas. Colton McCoy running this offense. Again, no huddle now. The new 40-second clock rule. A lot of teams are going to the no huddle, and they're just faking it inside. Then he's going to throw it downhill. That's your check down receiver. That's what Kendall is. Excuse me, not Kendall, but uh, Vondrell McGee. Vondrell McGee. I was, excuse me. I've never got dual numbers. who are going to mess us up tonight. But, uh, <laughs> they pass it out on the flat this time and across the 40 to the 37-yard line. As Malcolm Williams gets the reception, he is a redshirt freshman from Garland, Texas, tackled by Greg Joseph. And they want to find out who's going to be the third receiver in this package. you got Jordan Shipley and Quan Cosby, the two stalwarts out there, but Malcolm Williams are looking for him to come in and be that spark, perhaps, in the third guy. Little option. McGee. Job, uh, busted for a first down. Texas got it moving now inside the 25 and Greg Joseph to stop there. Well, Colt McCoy just ran this play to perfection, doing the option to the outside. And you see the numbers here of last season for Vondrell McGee. And good job by McCoy. Watch him going to pitch it inside, take the defender, get him to set, and then McGee around the edge. Excellent job on the option play. Texas, a first down at the 25-yard line. And again, the handoff and McGee. 15 and down near the 10-yard line. McGee, a first down machine. Shipley, a nice block to help open it up for it. No doubt about it on the outside. Jordan Shipley made this play happen because he maintained his block. Watch on the bottom of the screen here. Number eight going to get that block right there. You're going to be able to do that run up and down the field when you can do those kinds of things. And Excellent job of getting in between those blockers and McGee having a nice start here at this ball game. 13 yards on that pickup. Another first to 10, this time at the 12-yard line of Fort Atlantic. Cosby wide left. Shipley in the slot. And the handoff to Obaniah. Obaniah breaking tackles. Is he in? No signal. No, he was down. Chris Obaniah. The senior out of Missouri City, Texas, showing some real explosion. Well, a lot of the work being done by Vondrell McGee to get it down the field, and Obanaya comes in. Didn't know which one of those two were going to start tonight, but Obanaya comes in. A little more experienced back than, than McGee, but a good job of taking it inside between the tackles, and you see the knee down there, so that's why it's no touchdown, so it's going to be not on the six-inch line. Fans are saying, you got to be kidding me as they take a look at the angle you're seeing here. He was down, according to the officials. Now they're going to look well, at that. wait just a minute. Obadiah oh, down the there. Good. Yeah. It's under review. Ask and you shall receive, and that's kind of what the UT fans are going to get. They're going to get a look see here by the replay officials. Obadiah last year, 21 receptions for 204 yards, 26 carries. And 66 yards also had a pair of touchdowns on the ground. Now, do we have a sideline view over here? Now, the knee's down, and is it crossed the plane of the, the end zone? From that line, I'm not sure that we can call that that was in. His knee looked like it was down, and I think it's a pretty good placement by the officials. Yeah. Just can't tell from that angle because it's from the outside. You know, we're looking at this way, and you need to be looking 100% down the sideline here. I don't think that that is going to be there. I think the call on the field may hold. And, yeah, this is probably going to be the best look at it here. You know, you see no football right there, and you see a knee. So I think we're going to be down on by contact as it's called on the field. Well, does it seem a little louder in here? If it does to you at home, hang on here. We'll get the ruling. It's because of the expansion of this stadium that now seats 94,113 and has closed in that one end zone that Obanaya was going into. Fans erupted. Ruling on the field is confirmed. First and goal. Well, I think it's a good call holds and nonetheless it's first and goal for the Longhorns inside the one yard line. So it looks like they're going to try to punch this thing in. First and goal to go. Get the jumbo package in there for the Longhorns. Obanaya 
stays in the ball game. Cody Johnson is also in. As Colt McCoy trying to punch one in. There's open eye in motion. The handoff. Johnson. Touchdown, Texas. Cody Johnson, redshirt freshman from Waller, Texas. His first carry, a score. That's pretty good productivity. Yeah, things were going <laughs> real well for Florida Atlantic on their drive, and then they turned the ball over on an errant snap, and the Longhorns just capitalized. Good job of working the ball down the field. Running game work with Vondrell McGee. And you also get Oban Yai in there, gets it to the six-yard line, and then Johnson well, gets a little bit of the, 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 the icing on the cake. Put that score in the end zone for Texas. 8.48 to go in the first quarter, and Texas has the lead. And coming on for the point after is Hunter Lawrence. Lawrence instead of the veteran Ryan Bailey. Bailey's had a little bit of a groin injury, and so Lawrence gets the call here tonight. He's been doing the kickoffs before for his first extra point attempt, and the junior from Bernie, Texas. Converts, and Texas is on top 7-0. Stay with us on College Football Saturday. The Ivory, yeah. And Blanchard, 25. Uh, welcome back. Texas on top, 7-0, taking advantage of the turnover on a fumble recovery off a bad snap, and then eventually Cody Johnson with a TD, plunging it in, and now Tucker gets ready to kick it off to the Ivory Edgecombe, or Jeff Blanchard are the deep players, as Justin Tucker... Texas got a number of kickers this year, and with Bailey having the injury, Tucker's now doing the kickoffs, and that's allowed Hunter Lawrence to take over just the field goal and extra point duties. This one into the end zone, and they will down it and bring it out as it's caught there by Jeff Blanchard. Uh, David Matlock getting the start tonight at center. Had a problem last snap. Snapped it over his quarterback's head, Rusty Smith. And the regular center, Nick Paris, out of the ball game. Not didn't even make the trip for Florida Atlantic. He's home with an injury. We see the, the errant snap here. One gets away from him. But uh, first ball game here, Nick Paris is having to, to, be, to play the start for start at center for, uh, for Florida Atlantic. So the Owls down 7 nothing. They start this drive from their 20 after... The opening drive started from the 40. Put it on the ground. Well, Muckleroy there to lead the way for the tackle. You'll see a lot of different formations here from, uh, from Florida Atlantic. They'll go with two backs. You see the little counter block here. You have the offside guard come around. Pretty good job of making a push inside. And that line did a nice job there pushing out of there the center for uh, Florida Atlantic. Rose the ball here. Gary Nord, the offensive coordinator at FAU. Fans, of course, of Texas remember him for years as head coach at UTEP. This one incomplete, tended for Lester Jean. And Nord has been with Howard Schellenberger at Louisville. He was with him at Oklahoma. And, of course, then became the head coach out at UTEP. Had some success there. And certainly knows exactly what the boss wants and has done a nice job of delivering. Oh, he really has, and he's a good fit there for Howard Schnellenberger's program. Howard can deal with other things when you got a competent coordinator like Gary Nord, former head coach, as you talked about at UTEP, Bill, calling the shots, and he's leading this Rusty Smith attack. Will Muschamp, the new coordinator on the defensive side for Texas, looking things over on a third down and seven. Going deep and a sensational catch by Gent. Oh, my, what a play as Brown was trying to cover on the play. Cortez Gent, who had 64 receptions in his all-conference first-team campaign a year ago, shows you why he also scored nine touchdowns, Gary. Good protection there, and a nice, easy throw there by Rusty Smith, and then Gent just goes out for it. He runs right around the backside of Chucky Brown. Can't get him down, so good job by Fort Atlantic extending this drive. 33 yards officially on the play. And the Owls come back to the ground game as Edgecombe with the carry. You know, a lot of UT fans were kind of surprised about Howard Schnellenberger and some of the comments that, that he made a few weeks prior to this ball game about talking about the Texas football team and not being as tough as they had been and not being as physical and dominant. 
what you see is offensive philosophy here coming out with two backs in the backfield and they're running right at Texas's defense. I'm sure many of the Texas fans have read that in was bulletin board material. He didn't deny it when we talked to him, but he, he also said, what I'm trying to tell my team is that we can't beat them with talent. We'll have to be tougher and play harder in order to have a shot. But he thinks his team is capable of coming in here and winning. Now there's a little <laughs> hat action there by the Texas defense coming around. And, you know, with Howard Schnellenberger and how they've done they've done their, their scheduling, Bill, you know, the past couple of seasons, they talked about having advanced training games, like games you come out to play the University of Texas. But he says no more advanced training games. We took that moniker off because they feel like they can compete now with the likes of Texas on the road and in these types of ball games. That's the kind of level that he wants his program to aspire to. Yeah, and after they won the conference championship last year, he said, we're ahead of things. We need to step it up. Well, they got a third and three here. They're three of three, third and six, I should say, three of three and third down conversions and a big hit across the middle as that one was intended for Lester Jean and Earl Thomas applied the blow. And that's typical the matchups, Gary. Thomas 5'10", Jean is 6'3". Very athletic in the secondary, but there's some size advantage for Florida Atlantic. They really are, and that ball was thrown high and kind of on purpose, but just a little bit higher than Rusty Smith needed to get it out there, so Florida Atlantic is going to have to punt this football. And coming on to kick it away will be Ryan, rather, a Keegan Peterson. Peterson stands on his own 46-yard line. And this one sails out of the end zone, and Texas will get it back on the 20. We'll take a brief timeout at College Football Saturday. It is Texas and Florida Atlantic. Longhorns lead 7-0. Friday Night Football isn't just a sport, it's a way of life. Catch your favorite team on Time Warner Cable's Central Texas On Demand Game of the Week. Watch the Robinson Rockets. And the China Spring Cougars. Take control of your favorite Panthers game. Rewind, fast forward, and pause. So you don't miss any of that. Relive those great moments from Friday Night Football. Time Warner Cable's Central Texas On Demand. Your community connection for high school football. If you love finding everyday adventures, the Subaru Forester is ready for anything with an all-new design inside and out and more horsepower than a Honda CRV. Plus, you'll love that it's a 2008 top safety pick. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Roger Beasley Subaru of Georgetown, obsessed with customer satisfaction. Visit SubaruGeorgetown.com. I get out and I ride with my buddies every weekend, you know. We go out and get after it. Like today we hit one section when everyone stopped, second guessed it, and I just kept going. Rock here, rock there. I just got a handful and there she went. True all-wheel drive, new active descent control, legendary ride and handling. Polaris, the world's toughest ATVs. Polaris Power Play sales event. Get to your participating dealer for up to eight hundred dollars in rebates and as low as three point nine nine percent APR on select ATVs. Take Welcome back. Uh, Keegan Peterson is the punter that is you saw the ball went well out of the end zone. And that's that's a mental mistake as much as a physical mistake. Well, really, you're at the 40 yard line plus 40 yard line. Just kick it out of bounds. Don't kick it to anybody. And the last thing you want to do is just kick it into the end zone or beyond because you're going to give great field position to the Longhorns, which they do. And Coach Snellenberger grabbed him as he came off the side. And I've had a long discussion with him about where you need to put that football. And he's over there visiting with Mickey Grudy, another kicker, saying, this is what you need to do. Longhorns, first and ten. Pitch and catch, and it is complete to Childs as Colt McCoy to John Childs. And this is part of the Q package as it has been labeled by the Texas Longhorns. With Childs, obviously, the backup quarterback, but more of a slash type. They've worked a lot of sets uh, this year to get him involved. And very simple, Gary. You want your best athletes in the field. No doubt about it. I think that's a great philosophy to put guys out there that are explosive. And Childs is certainly one of those. Colt McCoy, nice, easy delivery. We'll see some more plays and some more different opportunities for those two in the game at the same time. And we've also been told that there's a possibility Childs could play at the quarterback position early on. This one is complete to Cosby. 
Simple pass, nice run. First down right around the 40-yard line as Jermaine Council made the tackle. Yeah, and what a career Quan Cosby has had for the University of Texas, and he's done this numerous times. Make people miss in the open field, and that's how you make explosive big plays. Greg Davis loves to have explosive plays in his offense. Juan Cosby, 10th all-time as Texas in a Texas receiving as Texas receiving list in yardage, and he only needs just over a thousand yards to move up to number three all-time, and he could possibly get there this season. McCoy fakes the handoff here. Wow! Wow! Wide open, Irby. Oh, Bebo's horn got him out around the 45-yard <laughs> line. Other than that. Irby may take this right down the middle of the field. Nice roll out by Colt McCoy. Bounds to the new tight end, Irby, in the ball game. And right there, take a look at it. And like I said, you see the horn there? That's what got him. <laughs> Irby, you know he saw that wide open territory. He's still got 21. Great fake by McCoy to give him the time. Really was. And then the action outside, nobody in his face. And wide open space in the middle of the field. At the 39. And this one. Complete out on the edge. Taken down to the 34-yard line on the reception. Malcolm Williams again. Tarvorius Hill, a redshirt freshman, six foot 170, makes the stop for the Isles of Florida Atlantic. Well, if you don't play up a little closer to these receivers of the Florida Atlantic defense, you're going to have that throw and catch opportunity for Colt McCoy all night. And he's an accurate passer, a guy who's going to deliver the ball where he needs to. He'll read the defense and take what the defense gives you. So he doesn't have to throw it down the field to make huge plays. He's got guys like Cosby who can make you miss in the open field. You see, perfect so far tonight. McGee brought down, fumble the football. And Florida Atlantic has recovered it. Let's see if they whistle this one dead. And More McGee is down. Yeah, he's down. We got an, well, maybe an injury there as he rolled over very quickly. And ball was not called down. It was not. It was, looked like he was being, he was rolled over. And they like they're going to give it to Florida Atlantic. We'll take a look here. See the spin around. And he's on top of the defender. So he's not down. Oh, gosh. He's grabbing that leg. That yeah. knee. He probably got really held got underneath him. And. See the defensive lineman there just grab him, spin him around. He's, he wasn't down. The ball came loose. That's Gervonta Jackson, the defensive lineman, putting the contact on, on McGee. Jackson, a big-time hit, and then Council is the man that recovered the football. Jermaine Council, a redshirt junior out of Melbourne, Florida. And McGee he, off on his own power, but UT fans want to get a replay of that and take a look at it upstairs, but... Uh, Florida Atlantic getting up there really quick, getting the snap. Oh, here it comes. Couldn't get it off in time. We're going to have a review of this play. And the replay folks getting a workout tonight. Yeah, and as they take a the time on that, Gary, that running back situation as Mac Brown visits with them. For the first time in a long while, they do not have just Texas a is challenging the ruling on the field. A feature back a guy who all right we know this guy stays healthy knock on wood he's going to get us 1,000 1,200 yard type it's a little bit by committee but you've got Obaniah who we've seen tonight Fozzie Whitaker the third of this committee if you would he's a little dinged up so if McGee's not able to go then a lot of it tonight would fall on Chris Obaniah yeah Obaniah is going to get the bulk of the work if uh, if Andre McGee can't go we'll take another look at this play here a little bit different angle and here you see Jackson there is the knee down and the ball comes out. I think this is going to be overturned. His left knee was down. He still had control of the football. I think they'll piece this together with different video plays and reviews. You watch the left knee. The left knee is down. He still has the football. I think that this is not going to be a fumble by Vondrell McGee. And I think Texas will get recovery of that where he can put his knee down on the ground. You know, what Gary's talking about is when they look at the replay, they take a look at every angle and they learn different things from each angle and sometimes are able to piece that together. So we'll see what happens. Well, the Longhorn defense is out there right now and also the Longhorn offense. They, they don't know which way to go, so that's prepared. Okay, now here's one more look at it. Now the left knee is going to be down. There it is, down on the ground, and he's still got the football. So I'd be pretty, uh, be pretty surprised if this was not overturned. Mac Brown throwing the challenge flag on this play, trying to keep the football for his offense. Texas got their score tonight after a turnover by Florida Atlantic. And Florida Atlantic has not shown the ability to slow them down. This turnover could be kind of vital to their situation, even though we're early on with 4.40 to go here in the first quarter. 
Well, one turnover early in the ball game, snapped over the head of the center, excuse me, above the quarterback by Florida Atlantic. Set up uh, Texas for their first drive and score of the night. And now as they're driving to take it in again, Texas, they, they don't want to give that opportunity away also. After review, the runner's knee was down on the ground prior to the ball being lost. Therefore, first down, Texas. Texas will not lose a timeout to the successful challenge. And again, Bill, one of these plays where, you, where replay showed it. They got it right. right. They turned it the right way. So Texas football here, but Mac Brown has to throw the challenge flag. It wasn't something that was quick enough that we had to get two or three angles from our truck to the replay booth to get the correct one there. But it all worked out in the end. That's what is important. And uh, the Longhorns will have possession at the 29-yard line. More importantly, how is uh, Vondrell McGee? Yeah. They're making sure now they got the ball placed properly. It's a first and 10 after that five yard gain at the 29 yard line. So Obanaya in the backfield here with Colt McCoy. Obanaya takes it forward, picks up nice gain, gets it a couple down to the 27, maybe the 26 yard line. Yeah, here comes McGee back in the ball game. He seems to be okay. That's good news there as Obanaya comes out. Just a little tweak there for Von Drell. Kind of scared me here because I, I don't want him to get hurt early in this season or any player get hurt. Chance of not allowing him to continue with this football team. He one of the ball carrying on that opening drive. Second and eight from the 27. McCoy showing his running ability at the 20. Watch out. He's got a blocker or two. Tugs it all the way down inside the five-yard line. Colt McCoy, who last year ran for 492 yards. And what was it? Offensive coordinator Greg Davis said, if Vince Young hadn't played here, people <laughs> think, what an unbelievable runner. And he really is a very good athlete, an excellent runner, does a good job of making people miss, fights through tackles, and does a good job of continuing down the field, most importantly. And that's a nice run on the outside by Colt McCoy, who did a jo good job faking it, read it inside, and took it around the edge. 25 yards in the pickup, and they're knocking on the door again. First and goal from the two-yard line. Average of 9.3 yards per play. McCoy in trouble. Scrambles loose. Got a man. Complete touchdown, Obanaya. Boy gets his first TD pass of the year. Obanaya gets the Longhorns' second score of the first game, and it's Texas 13 zip. Now, what choice do you want to make? Your little counter action. You got your fullback coming out, Obanaya. Easy throw and catch by Colt McCoy on the outside. He could have run that in as well. Eight plays, 80 yards, 326 is all it took with a little. Time out for the replay to be taking place. And now Hunter Lawrence for the point after. And it is good. 14 to nothing. Texas on top over Florida Atlantic. We have 315 to go in this first quarter of the season opener. Here OK Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. We'll be right back with more of College Football Saturday. durability safety of all the great things nissan brings you this is the most thrilling the bottom line nissan's model year end sales event get 1500 cash back on the 33 mpg centra or 199 lease on the 32 mpg altima event ends september 2nd that's the bottom line nissan i gotta say i have no regrets Two weeks ago, I decided sell the loft, ditch the car, simplify. And even though I'm making do with less, I can still eat like a king. Because Jack's always putting new stuff on his value menu. Like his new nacho cheeseburger or chicken sandwich covered with nacho cheese and jalapenos for just a buck forty-nine each. So I can eat for practically nothing. Attention, Trackmaster! You have one last chance to get out of my treehouse! 
In celebration of our 100th anniversary, we're sharing our GM employee discount with everyone. You pay what we pay. Not a cent more. The GM employee discount. For everyone. Plus, get the best coverage in America on every GMC Acadia with better highway fuel efficiency than a Honda Pilot. And now get a 2008 GMC Acadia starting at 26662. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealers. There it is, the new look of Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium with that new end zone expansion wow. and capacity now over 94,000 seats but they actually will count all the workers, everybody here, and we'll get a count on that officially later. They expect it to be around 97, 98,000. Wow. And Matt Brown said he liked Ohio State's horseshoe look, and that was one of the things that was presented in the years here as they've tried to develop this, and it does have a little similar look to it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then you take on the other end zone, you got this monster, monster video board. Godzilla Tron. <laughs> it is a tremendous sight here in Texas. Kickoff in the end zone, and they're going to bring it out this time as Edgeco, the 10, the 15. Wrong decision. He is brought down near the 18 yard line. And about Brooks, our sideline man, he's got a special guest. Kevin Durant is in the house. Indeed, I do. Uh, Vince Young is being honored today for one of the better athletes ever to play on the football field here at the University of Texas. But moving to the hardwood, I'm joined now by the NBA Rookie of the Year, Kevin Durant. Kevin, it's good to see you back in Austin, my friend. Uh, what brings you back? You know, I just want to come and show the support to Vince and, uh, you know, along with the rest of the Longhorns, come back and enjoy the game. Well, I know you had a wonderful first season, NBA Rookie of the Year, nearly almost made that Olympic team. What was it like playing with those guys and in your first season, man? How do you feel like you progressed? You know, everything's a learning experience for me, and uh, I just try to take everything in stride, always work hard, but uh, it was a fun season. It was a long season as well, but, you know, it was a fun season, you know, playing alongside P.J. Carlissimo, a great coach and a legendary coach, so, you know, I just, I just got to get better, man. Now, your relationship with Vince, you all, I, I, I noticed you all uh, joking and, and being jovial over here on the sideline. How is your relationship with Vince? How do y'all know? How'd y'all meet? What's the deal with you two guys? You know, I met Vince after my freshman year. You know, he came back, and uh, you know, I got to talk to him a little bit. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great guy to be around, man. And uh, he's, he's uh, even though he's an he's a, uh, NFL star, he never gets big head. He's always humble. So that's a great guy I like to be around. And uh, our relationship has grown, you know, since we're both in professional sports. And, uh, you know, and we both went to Texas. So, you know, he's a great guy. In fact, we appreciate your time, Kevin. Always good. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I said, one of the best on the hardwood here at the University of Texas. Now, Ahmad, we've got to have one more question. What's the name? The name of the new team. The name of the team? What team? Oklahoma City. The Oklahoma City? What about Oklahoma, man? I think uh, that the name come out next week, so I know about next week. <laughs> Party line. So I'm, I'm just like you guys. I'm, I'm waiting for the name. <laughs> Tell the truth, Kevin. And on top know. of that, you, you, you obviously are here, and you were talking about the great things with Vince. Those are also things that you have qualities as well. How soon in the future, if any, will your name and your number be hanging from the rafters and, and uh, the drum? We're going to try to get this done, uh, you know, this year. You know, hopefully my, my schedule conflicts with their schedule, and I come down here for a game, and this year we're going to get it done. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you very much. And uh, good I think he knows everybody. more than he's saying. I really do. Well, that is the worst kept se secret in the world of sports. <laughs> Oklahoma City Thunder in the NBA. No, that's course. not it, Bill. They haven't officially announced no, no, that. No, no. Okay. All right. All right, let's get back to some football here where Florida Atlantic had a completion to Bonner a couple plays ago, and Smith is now 5 of 11 for 89 yards, and it's now a third and 10 from the 30-yard line. Complete across the middle, and then breaking a tackle and more. Grant still going inside the 10-yard line. Well, more important than he was wide open. It was a missed tackle in the middle field by Earl Thomas. Coming up on Grant trying to make a tackle. And this is just going back against the grain. And you'll see Thomas come into the picture here and just kind of whip on him. Just got to wrap up. You got to get your head in front and hold on. You're the last person, the secondary. You've got to make that play. And Good job of Grant trying to get down the field. He got a helper in blocking out there his other speedy receiver in Cortez Gant. They had a five-wide scenario there that time, and it certainly it worked because uh, Jamari Grant, a junior out of Jacksonville, Florida, goes 62 yards, and now it's Florida Atlantic on a first and goal 
at the eight-yard line of Texas. They're going to throw it up for grabs here. It was nearly taken by Texas as they were going to Jen. Well, you know, everyone knows that Texas had some problems in the secondary a year ago, did not have the success that they liked. In the bottom tier, I'm going to be polite here, in the bottom tier of pass coverage units in the, in the, in the country in college football, they need to make an improvement this year, but this team, Florida Atlantic, they're capable of throwing the ball down the field with Rusty Smith. He's a poised quarterback. He's got skilled receivers to throw to. This is going to be a good challenge for this young Longhorn secondary tonight. Texas gave up 277 yards a game in the year last year. That was 109 in the country. I was being nice, Bill. Just given the facts because <laughs> they've said, all right, we got to fix that. Second and goal. Smith mm. tipped in the end zone, and it is picked off. Interception, Ryan Palmer. The senior out of Arlington Bowie in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex comes up with a turnover and saves the day. Well, the senior cornerback back there does his job, but I don't think Rusty Smith has a very good idea of where he's thrown. So if you just kind of look at colors, you can hold it right there. You can see there's six orange jerseys in the secondary and only one white jersey. Look at all that orange color, and guess who comes down with it? Not a very good decision, I think, by Rusty Smith to throw that football to try to squeeze it through that window. The throw wasn't there, but a big play by Palmer coming up with a tip pass. Texas comes back with their Q package, as we mentioned, and that means John Childs. And actually, Childs would be the quarterback. They do have a scenario where Colt McCoy is in the game and not at quarterback. Childs himself in trouble here and there'll be a loss on the play as they smother him near the 10 yard line forward progress stopped near the 15 as joseph and hancock are there i'm going to leave Childs in here at the quarterback spot gonna let him play his way out of this i think it's going to be one of those series where they want to see how he operates as a quarterback not not as a slash position or or a receiver outside Second and 15 after the loss of five for Childs and crew. They come after him again here. He finds McGee. McGee ripped away from one tackle attempt. Flag is thrown late as he was stopped near the 18 and Savage made the tackle. Josh Savage. That was good recognition by George Allen, the linebacker for Florida Atlantic, number 50. Initially diagnosed that play and almost had the tackle. Got to let him slip through. We got a Florida Atlantic player down and Got a penalty as well, and there's a good look at George Allen, the senior, 6'1", 240 pounder. He moved from his strong linebacker spot last season to, to the weak linebacker spot and going to play a little bit more outside space. There is no space. foul on the play. Timeout for the injured player. Third down. 101 to go here before the end of the first quarter. And had a number of stoppages already tonight, some because of replay. You see so the Longhorn injury. Yeah, the Longhorn's out front. There's George Allen getting outside there, doing a good job of diagnosing play. Just got to make that tackle. And his uh, teammates come in and continue to play on McGee and pretending to the Florida Atlantic player down on the field. Council. And the defensive end, big Jermaine Council, the redshirt junior. 13 games a year ago and got the start today after an injury to Robert St. Clair. And Council. Out of Melbourne, Florida. Let me help him up. And yeah, good fans here at Texas applauding uh, the young man getting up. And well, they love football here in Texas, Bill. They love the atmosphere. It's great when you come to, the, to, to Austin. People outside of the stadium just doing it up right with the tailgates and everything going on. Great to get the college football season underway, and certainly this year, Texas, even though going 10 and 3 a year ago, Oklahoma, the overwhelming pick in the south, Missouri up in the north. So if Texas can ever be under the radar, this is certainly the season where they got a chance to develop, and then who knows what happened. Childs, incomplete. And the play of John Childs is one of those things that's going to have to come about. And you, that's what you use your non-conference games to do, that you're going to get a chance to put him in when real bullets are flying. Well, he's learning, and you see he's going over the sidelines, talking to a former quarterback here in Major Applewide, who's now on the staff working with Greg Davis in the offense. And 
Need that guy who's got experience out there to help coach those quarterbacks along. You got Colt McCoy who, who knows this offense and new coach and Apple White who came back to Texas. Trevor Gerland is on for the punting. Gerland averaged 37 yards a kick last year. And this one, not fair caught, and finally stopped about the 38 yard line. And that's where Florida Atlantic will take over as Polo on the punt return. Well, we're talking about flying under the radar. Matt Brown offered a comment about that approach to Texas this year. None of that's really important, except for all of the jibber jabber in the summer. The only thing that's important is how you finish and where you start really doesn't matter. Mac Brown in his 11th year here at the University of Texas. He says, there's no pressure here. Tank just wants you to win all the games. That's all. That's, that's only all. one a week. As long as you do that, everybody's happy. Suit up, win. That's all they want. Play action for Rusty Smith. Out of bounds. Acrobatic catch, but no, you're right. As uh, that again was 87, Jamari Grant. Big, tall receiver. You got a good frame there. 6'5", 210 pounder. I could see why that uh, Smith likes to throw the ball out there to him. And coming across the field well, but just a little bit uh, late getting there. In coverage, you had Blake Gideon, the freshman again. Matt gave him a little help on the call as well, just in case the officials needed it. And Florida Atlantic running the ball. They're six for minus 16. So it has been solely a passing game, and Smith 151 yards on 6 of 15. Had one picked off on the last possession. Flips it out here. Edgecombe breaking a tackle, and he would appear to have the first down into Texas territory near the 49 as Jared Norton, 6'3", 230, a junior out of Rowlett, Texas, making the tackle. Good job of misdirection play there, getting the tail back outside, and you're going to see a pretty good block here back on a crackback block, get him up above the waist, that's good. And Deion Beasley, number seven, comes in and kind of makes a whiff there, doesn't get the tackle he needs to. Good pursuit there by the Longhorns inside out. There's Norton, I believe, making the tackle on the sideline. Makes 11 yards on the play, and it's first and 10 at the 49 of Texas. Smith, incomplete. That ends the first quarter. Texas in control, 14-0 over Florida Atlantic, as the Longhorns have gotten a touchdown from Cody Johnson and Chris Obanaya. McCoy throwing for one. Longhorns on top after one quarter. The field to bring you. Welcome back on the campus of the University of Texas in Austin. College football Saturday. Longhorns 14 zip leader here after one quarter against Florida Atlantic. Mac Brown visiting with the officials here as the Longhorns. Pretty good football action here in this first quarter. Florida Atlantic has moved it, but has not got in the end zone yet. You see the rushing story with Texas dominating there. Rusty Smith has his club set for a second and 10 at the 49 of Texas. He's hit four different receivers for 15 plus yards on plays. And here's another big play. Off to the races on the sideline as they continue to go through the air and riddle the University of Texas. This time it is Rob Hausler, the tight end, a junior who is a Texan out of Converse Judson High School just down I-35. And one of the things that Will Muschamp is probably really upset with right now is the tackling effort that he's getting from his Texas defense. Not a great job here of tackling these receivers from Florida Atlantic as they go down the, down the field. And that's one of the things that happens to you in training camp. You don't have the ability to, to do live tackling. So this first game, those first opportunities to make those live hits, sometimes you come up empty. Hausler, 30 plus yards on that play. And the ball carrier, Charles Pierre, on this tote. Let's check in on the sideline again. Ahmad. Here we go. Of course, I'm joined here with the man of the hour. Vince, you've come back on so many different occasions for so many different things, but today signifies a different day. Your name is officially now a part of this stadium. How does it feel to have your jersey retired? I mean, it, it, it haven't already hit me yet, you know, to force, uh, you know, point of, you know, how big it is yet, but, you know, the respect that uh, the people and the fans and my, the University of Texas have for me, I'm definitely appreciative as well as with my family as well. 
People know of your accomplishments on the field. However, you came back this summer to obtain your degree. Tell us why and why was that so important to you, V? Well, it'll definitely be. You never know how long you're going to play in the, in the NFL. And, you know, definitely I wanted to get my degree for myself and, and uh, for my family and my mom. But in the same time, you know, you know, you put in all that hard work of sitting in the classroom while you was here and not to come back and finish. I don't understand that one bit, but I always want to finish and continue making myself, my family proud, my fans proud, and, you know, being a role model, letting everybody else know that you need to always go finish up school no matter what, how much money you have. Many of your former teammates came out today to support you. Also, several teammates from the Tennessee Titans. What does it feel to have your teammates here, and what's the outlook for the season for the Tennessee Titans this year? Uh, I mean, my, my teammates, man, they, they, they got a strong, strong support and cash for me, man, and they, they give me so much confidence when I'm out there on the football field because, you know, the fact is, you know, a lot of different things is always getting scrutinized a lot, and I can always turn to my family, my fans, uh, my teammates, my coaches, and them guys that just pick me up to continue, you know, to see me su be successful, and that's what I want to do. I always want to make them happy because of the fact that how much respect and love that they have for me, I'm going to go out there and play my heart out to the fullest so for these guys to come out here today man i'm truly truly blessed to have guys like that to come hang out with me and um you know come hang out with me to see what's going on and come to see it be a part of this texas football so by you are truly a role model for young and old gentlemen back to you thanks very much Ahmad. as keegan peterson comes on for the field goal attempt and a flag was thrown right before the kick i believe gary well, if it's if it's a five-yard penalty against texas that'd be a first down Delay. against Florida Atlantic. Nope. offense five-yard penalty legs fourth down now that's one thing the 42nd clock got to and that's the field goal team you want to back it up five yards and do it again so peterson with another shot he's a junior out of riverview florida six foot 185. Now, a decent job of red zone defense by texas negating florida atlantic and Rusty Smith and throwing one into the end zone. And different kicker now. It'll be Worley Leroy for the field goal attempt. And 31 yarder, and this one is good. So Worley Leroy, a senior out of Boca Raton. And last year he hit 19 of 27. He puts Howard Schnellenberger's club on the board. It's 14 3, Texas. Watch a college football Saturday. We'll be back in Austin in a moment. The perfect time to get. Welcome back to Austin, where Texas leads at 14 3 over Florida Atlantic. The Owls just getting on the scoreboard on the field goal by Leroy. And Leroy will kick it off here. Longhorns will have two deep players as Brown and Bosby and Shipley here. And Shipley will take a knee and they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. Jordan Shipley. Good to see him finally healthy. He's had so many injuries in his Texas career. And Colt McCoy will come back on. He is 7 of 7 for 63 yards. No rust there. No. And he finished very strong over the last eight games of the year, Bill. Over 65% completion percentage last year. and Finished up real strong. Obviously not disappointing tonight. Getting good production up front. His offensive line doing a pretty good job. And John Childs will be a wide out to the near side on this possession. First and 10, Texas. And looking to Childs, not going there. McCoy now finds Irby. Nice catch by Blaine Irby, the sophomore from California. Last year played 11 games, had a couple of catches. Watch the protection here. Good job by the O-line there, picking him up. Everybody's clean out, no problem getting to the quarterback there. Nobody's getting to him, rather, and just finds his tight end, Irby. And that offensive line, it's anchored up front by a couple of guys that are preseason, got some, got some accolades ahead of them. That's Chris Hall, the center, and Cedric Dockery. And those guys, both of them have an opportunity. They're on some watch lists. Dockery's on the Outland watch list, and Remington, the center. Excuse me, Chris Hall, the center, the Remington list. So they've been noticed, and this offensive line bill has some experience, and if they play well, and they're going to need to play well to really help this football team along, they've got to develop a running game. Where is it going to come from? We've seen Vondrell McGee be pretty explosive tonight, and they could be an excellent offensive football team if uh, this offensive line does what is expected. Saw so McGee on that last carry, and, and I think most folks, if you take a deeper look at Colt McCoy's so-called offseason last year, he had 18 interceptions, and, and that is too many. A lot of that was because of what happened in the offensive line. And 
they certainly feel, as you're saying, that with this group going to be much better, you can expect a better performance out of your quarterback, and as a result, these running backs that are playing, trying to find their way in the early going. Yeah, and you got Adam Ulatowski, number 74, who's playing left tackle for, for the Longhorns. He played all across the offensive line last year for him, and really had to move around. He was their X factor because he was the one guy that they had the ability in to move around. And take a look at Vondrell's numbers. That's because he's getting pretty good blocking up front there for Vondrell. But the offensive line, they need to be a strong suit for the Longhorns. So McGee, a couple of carries and sets up a third and three now for McCoy out of the gun. Quick hitter and Irby gets his third reception and has the first down. Yeah, good job of using his hands, getting there. Good defense there by the, in the secondary, getting coming downhill, trying to make that play by Florida Atlantic defense. You're going to see the second safety come down the hill there and just trying to knock that ball away. But a bigger receiver using his hands and pulling it in. Greg Joseph made the stop. There's Greg, the senior out of Jacksonville, Florida, as Texas up 14-3, 11-25 to go second quarter, and moving it again. Mixing it up nicely. Irby, two catches last year, three in the first game tonight. How about this? Shipley got hit just as he delivered the football. And it falls incomplete. Well, Shipley, Cosby, those guys, they play together, and he was open down the field. And just a little bit longer he needed, he goes inside. You see him trying to fake the inside route, but not going to be there. And McCoy tried to pick him up with a block. <laughs> that is not one of the things that Colt McCoy not, is going to Not going to work. And I don't know if you want him looking for some of those big guys. <laughs> Second down and 10. McCoy delivers this one. And another first down as that'll move the change on the reception by Malcolm Williams. And Williams, his first game as a Longhorn has been impressive in the early going. Yeah, a couple of grabs here already for Williams, that third wide receiver. This spread offense, I think, is really helpful for Colt McCoy. I think he understands things now. He sees everything, sees the defensive line, and knows where to go with the football. McCoy keeping it this time to the 30. And run oh, out of bounds near the 25, and the flags are flying. Well, not too much uh, problem with that one. You get to Colt McCoy about two yards out of bounds, and then you get uh, a little extracurricular activity there by Ed Alexander, the safety coming over the top. And we'll take a listen here. After the play, personal foul, 38 defense. That's the distance to go. First down. No question about that, and. Longhorns already a 14-3 lead. Florida Atlantic has shown little ability to slow them down. And the penalty was on Ed Alexander, sophomore. Fans getting another look at the Godzilla Tron. Bigger than life. Yes. <laughs> a humongous scoreboard here. And Florida Atlantic's been to a lot of big places. And they played Florida, they played Minnesota. I don't know if they in the pregame warm-up, most of their players could not keep their eyes off the, it, it's there's no way you can if you haven't been here before but well, we'll go back to that shot again from the end zone this field is 52 yards wide and you can just see how wide that screen is McCoy flag thrown incomplete trying to connect with Cosby Corey small doing a good job in coverage they're staying with his receiver with the receiver across the back of the end zone He's got uh, you know, one of the better defensive backs that Florida Atlantic has. He's a NFL draft prospect. Girl can't get FaceTime. That's, that's, that's not good. There are two <laughs> fouls by the defense on the play. Offside defense, the penalty is declined. Roughing the passer, number five defense. That penalty would be half the distance to the goal. First down. Referee Gerald Wright saying, wait a minute, let me get my speaking done, then I'll drink my water. Yeah, and they're getting Charlie Tanner picked up off of, off the turf there, big uh, big guard, playing left guard Time for him. Out. Looks Injured like he's player. favoring his left leg Boy. there to some level, and that's not good. You want to keep these guys healthy early in the season, you want them to grow, and that's just going to set him back a little ways. Tanner, a junior from here in Austin, out of Anderson High School. In fact, both his parents graduated from University of Texas. Nine game starter a year ago and counting it heavily on him this year. And I believe Michael Huey comes into the ball game playing that guard spot for him as a replacement. So 
Charlie Tanner, gosh. Hate to see that early in the season at all. So I hate to see it at all. Huey is a sophomore from Kilgore, Texas. And we'll pick it up now with Texas first and goal to go from the six yard line following that penalty. McCoy has Obaniah in there with him. Dumps it off to Chris. Obaniah trying to follow some blockers. And steps out of bounds. Now Not asked, much gain, if any. They asked this offensive line to be athletic. They run the screens to the outside. They asked them to bump and release. And the athletes that Texas has across the offensive front, all these guys can do that, Bill. That's what's unique about them. Sure, they are they are huge. You know, they're 340, 330 pounders, and but they can still make those blocks and still get outside to be effective in the open field and blocking on the defense. Vondrell McGee got a good initial push and then stopped suddenly around the three-yard line. And Obanaya will come back for McGee now. Well, now Texas has had this ball here at first and goal inside the 10-yard line, and Florida Atlantic has done a pretty good job the first couple of plays here. So now third down. Nine plays, 76 yards on this drive so far. They're trying to punch it in here. On a third and goal, officially from the four-yard line. McCoy. And whistles and flags stop this play from getting underway. Going to see a false start there. Part of the snap. False start. 74 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Thanks, you, Lutoski. Well, when you're 6'8", and that kind of happens to you sometimes. It's big Adam on the outside. Oh, hand to face. So it changes up a bit for Texas now as McCoy bring him out third and goal from the nine. Dan Buckner is in the ball game as one wide out. McCoy trying to buy some time, comes back against the gray touchdown. Jordan Shipley, a strike from McCoy. And Jordan Shipley, a senior out of Vernon, Texas, gets the TD. Jackson puts some pressure on McCoy, but not enough. He's still perfect, 12 of 12 on the day. Uh, Shipley's just going to come across the back of the end zone and continue to work for Colt McCoy. And defenders don't stay with him. That's what they need to do defensively, and he knows it. He knows what he needed to do right there across the field, and did he get it done? Mr. Morris Hill in coverage, and Shipley had a nice, easy catch there. Hunter Lawrence on for the point after attempt, and it is good from Texas. Lawrence three of three, and Jordan Shipley get in on the scoring act. Longhorns 21, the Owls of Florida Atlantic three. Welcome back as Jordan Shipley enjoys a little refreshment on the sideline. Shipley, who had an unbelievable high school career as a receiver and has battled injuries throughout, he's healthy, and that's a big weapon as Colt McCoy found him here. And McCoy, as you take a look at Tanner being taken away, McCoy has been perfect tonight. Yeah, 12 of 12 so far to start this ball game. Doesn't have to throw it far. He's got exceptional athletes throw it out there to him, and they'll make the plays, but he also is a guy who's a dual threat quarterback, Bill. He can do it with his speed as well. A smart guy who plays well in space. He runs this offense to perfection tonight so far this evening, and if he's on fire like this throughout the rest of the year, the Longhorns are going to be in until the end. Longhorns rolling here, 21-3. McCoy gets on the headset, visit Greg Davis, and 10 plays, 80 yards, 423 is what it took. As McCoy also see that note has run a couple of times for 37 yards. All part of what has really been labeled as you're the quarterback in the Big 12 Conference, Justin Tucker to kick it off. And Edgecombe will bring it out. The 16-yard line. That's where they'll operate first and 10. You know, Bill, Texas has really built this program over the last several years, and 
Right at the helm of it is Mac Brown. Uh, he has done a great job with this program, and there's some there's some numbers in the in the the notes that we get each week to read here about the program. They're just tremendous with what he does. He's coming off his seventh consecutive ten win season here at uh, the school, and you know one of the things that they have is they're one of all, one only school that has both started and finished the season, ranked among the nation's top 15 in each of the last eight seasons. That's starting and finishing. Man, that's hard to do. We talk about what's it take to be great, consistently good. Well, he's been consistently great. Yeah. And the defense answering here. McElroy leads the way on the opening stop. Well, you talk about the growth of the program, but what about the season ticket base here? I tell you, it's impressive, too. You know, they started with a little over 35, 37,000 when Matt came here, but now it's up over 80,000 for season ticket sales here in this complex and now seats over 90,000. Where are they going with this program? And when they announce the official tonight, it'll be the largest crowd to watch a college football game in the state of Texas. Smith rolls out and incomplete. So Texas defense now trying to stiffen a little bit. That's a couple of throws now. The Rusty Smith is thrown way upstairs and his receivers just can't get up to that level to get them. So he needs to be a little sharper with his passes. He's got the ability to do that, but you see there he's got a little, little green on his jersey. They've been getting to him a little bit. So now the 8, 8 of 20, not the efficiency you'd like to have. Gent goes wide to the right side. And this one. Stumbling near the 13 yard line out of the backfield, William Rose. Now Gary Nord calling a safe play there to get the ball down the field and not make it, not throw it down the field, but throw it out to the, to the short flat. It's been pulled in quick enough to get a good run after the catch. But a good job there by Texas again defensively holding on here, not allowing Florida Line to move the football. Keegan Peterson on for the punting this time. And Peterson drives it. And it's picked up on the run. And good coverage that time by Fort Atlantic as the stop is made as Quan Cosby on the return. Cosby, Gary's giving you some of his numbers. Absolutely amazing with 3,190 all-purpose yards coming in here tonight. Timeout is called. Texas, great field position when we come back. And the Longhorns, a 21-3 leader as well. Back to the action here as Texas takes over. McCoy has all day going down the sideline, and it is complete inside the 25-yard line. Obanaya out of the backfield, and Chris Obanaya makes the reception. Well, why don't you fake it to him and throw it to him? Obanaya coming out on the play fake there out of the back. You can see him running around, and there he keeps going. Colt McCoy with a strike here. Nice grab. Obanaya showing he's got pretty good hands. Getting around the linebacker. Stewart now in coverage. And a 30-yard pickup. His consecutive completions. And the record watch is on. He's hit 13 of 13. And... He and Vince Young owning that record at 15. I nice. think Vince is watching, huh? Yeah, he's here, so uh, <laughs> might as well say hey. And oh. make it 14 of 14. Not oh, juggled. He juggled. I beg your pardon. Wow. Polo covering on the play with James Kirkendall, the sophomore out of Red Rock. Round Rock, Texas, I should say. That's and the, did our guys jinx him? We put the stat up there, and that's what happened. <laughs> Good play there in the secondary. The ball was there. Good play. Knocked it out. And not able to bring it in. Let's Just go back down to, Polo. pardon me, Gary, to Ahmad Brooks. Got another guest with him on the sideline. We sure do. Another teammate of Vince Young, also a Texas legend here as well. Ahmad Hall, fullback. My friend, you came back to Austin, of course, another time. What brings you back? Man, it's so important, you know, for us to come out and show our support for Vince. You know, Vince getting his uh, jersey retired. And any time as an uh, ex-Longhorn, an ex-football player here, you always want to come back when you get a chance, man. It's a family atmosphere, and we love coming back. Guys can't get, stay away from Austin. Now, you've played with Vince in college and also in the pros. 
key memories, man, of watching this guy do his thing over the past several years? Man, I have so many memories of Vince, you know what I mean? Just winning that national championship and, uh, you know, you know, him just continuing to do the same thing once he got in the league. You know, he's done a lot of things that he's done, I mean, in college football, in the NFL, and it's amazing to see him make that tra transition. But just being with him outside the field, you know, is just the, the you know, my most fond memories of, that I have of Vince, you know, just hanging with him as a friend and watching his development and, and you know, I mean, develop into a man. Ahmad Hall, fullback here who helped Vince Young run for some of those touchdowns, still doing it in Tennessee. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you very much. It's good to see so many of those ex-players back here. Blaine Irby make the reception, but he was short of the first down on a third down situation. It makes it a fourth and two for Texas, and we'll see if they go for it or not. It appears they'll be trying for the field goal attempt, and Hunter Lawrence will be doing the kicking. So Lawrence, again, uh, if you didn't catch it early, Ryan Bailey, a bit of a hamstring injury, and Lawrence is getting the field goal and extra point duties. 31-yard attempt coming up. Timeout. Fort Atlantic, their first timeout this half. So the Owls want to talk it over as we have 5.39 to go. They take a look there at Howard Schnellenberg, and really what he's done with this program, Bill, is pretty impressive, and... You know, in 2001, well, I'll just give you a little perspective here. The University of Texas has played football 104 more years than Florida Atlantic's program, 1890-something or so. And Howard just got that program rolling in 2001. So this being their eighth season, they played four seasons at the Division I AA level. Then they were in the transition years, a couple of seasons. This is a, their seventh season overall. So Florida Atlantic and with Howard Schnellenberger, they're trying to build this program from the ground up, and they're a, they're, they're a decent program. They really are winning the Sun Belt Conference a year ago. And in their one double A days, 03 and 04, they went 11 and 3 and then 9 and 3. So, I mean, it's been on a fast track. His record there, 41 and 42. Uh, overall, 24 years in college coaching, 141 and 119. But this is a guy that our conference call, he mentioned about going to work for Blanton Collier. And people are going, who's Blanton Collier? He, he's a legend in football. But when you're Coach, you're talking to 74 years old. Yeah. Now, we all know Bear Bryant. He worked with him as well. Don Shula goes on and on. George Allen. All right, they fake the field goal, and Shipley gets the first down. No surprise there. I was thinking that Mack was going to go for this anyway. I thought he put, might put his offense back out there. Good job of getting that first down, keeping it going, put the offense back out there on the field. And just a direct snap to, go to, the, to the holder, which uh, Shipley in this case. Just push that pile in the middle. Just need a couple. Shipley mentioned just what an outstanding athlete he is. He played for his father, Bob, at Burnett. Of course, Stephen McGee was the quarterback. Thus, they both set a lot of records in their high school days. McGee, of course, over at AM. And first down now, it goes to Vondrell McGee. And flag is thrown as he's tugged down at the five-yard line. George Allen in on the stop. Yeah, looks like we're going to get a hold inside there on the Texas offense. On the back. Holding, 63 offense, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. And now we get the, the new guys coming in there, calling Michael Hill. We watched the left guard coming around, and he's got that nose tackle. You see that tackle right there, bingo. He got him down. Pretty good down block to me, but uh, might have had a little cloth on the outside. And push it back as Texas with a comfortable lead, but it has not been a real smooth first half both ways other than Colt McCoy's passing. <laughs> yeah, he's been really smooth. Only only one incompletion on the evening so far. And we'd like to have a do-over on that, or Kirkendall would, as McCoy comes into Shipley on the in route and makes it to the 15-yard line as Jackson makes the tackle. You got to be kind of tough to come inside like this. You know the linebacker's going to hit you. You take that pass, and those defensive linemen get out of there sometimes as well. Second and goal to go. 4:20 remaining here in the first half as McCoy continues to light them up. They've had 17 first downs and 35 plays. This is another completion as Irby 
picked up quickly after he has stopped near the 11 yard line. Corey Small making the tackle. Good open field tackle by Corey Small coming up there on a big receiver. Only at 5'10, 190, coming in and making a good, clean, low tackle. McCoy has spread it around in the receiving game. Irby, Obaniah, William Shipley, McGee, Cosby, and Childs have all caught passes from Colt McCoy in this incredible first half performance. Third and goal. Got a man here, and it is complete. And and be contact. He's outside. out of bounds. Yep, out of bounds. I think, they're gonna, I think they're going to call him contact and forcing him out of bounds, Bill. So this is probably going to go against the Florida Atlantic defense. And talk about number 26 out there, Corey Small. He has little contact there, and he pushes him out of bounds, and that's what I believe the officials are going to call. Small with nine career interceptions. Pass interference, number 26, defense. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. A spot foul right there, and you can see him here on the outside. There's the matchup, and he's going to go to the outside and watch him right there around the two yard lines. You can see that pushing and shoving and knocks him out of bounds. And well, he denied him a touchdown there, but almost insured him one now because it'll go to first fresh set of down goal from the two. So tough play for Corey Small, who is a senior. DB out of Naples, Florida last year, number two all-conference pick with five interceptions. Here is McCoy, sprinting to the corner. Got it, touchdown, Texas. Holt McCoy, who's already thrown for two, scores his first. Well, again, he had the same choice there with the fake. He could throw that ball or run the ball. He had Jordan Shipley coming across the back of the end zone. Colt McCoy decided to just use his legs, and he's had a fantastic night. He's run this offense to perfection, Bill, and He's done this the last couple of seasons, and he is really poised, I think, to have a great junior campaign. Well, was it last year where we saw him throw for 295 yards and a half against Rice in a game down here? And uh, he has had one whale of a half here this evening. He is 16 of 17 for 153, thrown for two, scored one, and the point after by Hunter Lawrence is good as well. And Texas now up 28 to three. Just an impressive effort here by the Longhorns. All even tonight, you take a look at their possessions, four touchdowns and one punting situation. So Texas getting it done for the most part and whenever they had the football. Yeah, Florida Atlantic, we wondered, we thought they would move the ball and they have, but the question coming in was could their defense put up enough to make it a game and so far, it's been pretty much whatever Mac Brown's crew has wanted. They've got. Yeah, Kirk Hosa, defensive coordinator, talked about their guys playing and their ex playing experience is the key. They've got some young guys and they're having to move up and talent, but they're not really that experienced. And they say feel like they've got decent speed out there. But overall, the offense for Texas has been clicking and taking care of what they wanted to against Howard Schnellenberger's defense. <laughs> You see, he didn't get the weather report that it's going to be 90 plus <laughs> and super well, hot. Got the jacket on still. I tell you what, that is old school, and that is coat and tie and that demeanor on the sideline. And I don't know how healthy it is, but uh, hopefully he's staying hydrated. That's right. He put one of those vests on him. <laughs> well, it's the makings of a long, long night for the Owls. And Mac Brown, of course, his tenure here, starting their 11th year with his staff, and it's quite a staff he's put together. I'll tell you what, and the continuity that they've been able to maintain over the years. Mac, last year, 10 and 3, and this year, of course, after this game, they've got at UTEP before they play Arkansas and Rice, then get on to the Big 12. Here's the kickoff and almost wrestle for it before finally brought down and up to the 25 and to the 30 yard line and carrying the football Jeff Blanchard. Blanchard stopped there and with 318 to go in the half. We'll see what the Owls can put together offensively. And what about uh, Will Muschamp first half as a defensive coordinator? It seems like 
they made some adjustments. Smith was getting a lot of what he wanted in the passing game early, but not much later. It looks like the secondary has kind of shored things up here pretty well. They're getting a little pressure on the quarterback. You see the dirty jersey there for Rusty Smith. He's gotten knocked to the ground, and that's what you want to do to a quarterback come into your stadium. You want to dirty him up a little bit and make it hard for him to operate. 28-yard return by Blanchard gives him a first and 10 at the 32, and he drills a strike across midfield to Gent, Cortez Gent. And has it at the 49, a pick of a 19 yards. Well, they just continue to rush the quarterback and try to hit him, and they did that time after, a, after he threw the football, though, but it was a continuation play. Rusty Smith trying to run this team down the field. Got plenty of time to work with. First to 10 for Smith in the out. Hands it off. Rose. Nice opening. And then a loose football. Flag thrown. I think he was already down. Earl Thomas made the tackle on William Rose. No, I think they was actually throwing a bean bag and not a flag. He oh, pulled up, had the wrong grab there, so it's going to be a first down here for Florida Atlantic. And yeah, he's down. See Earl Thomas there making the tackle. First and 10 from the 36. A pump fake from Smith looking for Jet again. And incomplete flags come flying. Yeah, it's going to be contact on the outside, no doubt about that. Palmer on the outside trying to cover Jet, and Jet's trying to get around him and impeding the progress. Ryan Palmer is going to have a pass interference call, call on him here. And you see the pump fake there. Rusty Smith puts it out there nicely. And Gent with three receptions for 59 yards. Pass interference, 13 defense, 15-yard penalty, previous spot, first down. So Fort Atlantic is in business. And you know Texas is thinking, hey, we, we put together a pretty nice half here. We made some adjustments. Let's not give them any reason to be hopeful going into the second half, Gary. That's certainly what you like to do in Texas defense so far tonight. has played pretty good red zone defense. Fort Atlanta's had it down here a couple of times, but haven't been able to get in the end zone. Video board demands that the crowd make noise. They respond. They're coachable. And it's first to 10 for the 21-yard line. Flag thrown. False start, 71 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. And big John Rizzo getting called there, leader of that offensive line, the right tackle. Move it a little bit early. Nine penalties in the game, five on the Owls, four on Texas in this first half. And then will make it a first and 15 from the 26 yard line. Well, Bill Florida Atlantic, they're missing their, they're all everything tied in. Who's not in this ball game? The second timeout. This will be a 30 second timeout. Timeout here. And this is a ball club that has moved it, but hasn't been able to punch in for the touchdown because of turnovers in the red zone. Yeah, you got the snap here over Rusty Smith's head by the center, and that's an unforced error you're going against you, and you can't do that. And then you throw one into the end zone here, get a tip pass and intercept it. So a couple opportunities in the end zone went awry because of turnovers, and then there's one field goal up on the board for Florida Atlantic. So they've had the opportunities down here, just have not been efficient with it. And that one almost got away as well. And Howard Schnellenberger realizing, all right, we got 2.23 to go. Really need a touchdown. I mean, you're down 25 right now. Three would be nice, but you, you, need, you go in 28-10, you're at least saying, all right, guys, we, we can come back from this. And we've shown we can do something because you know he's going to tell his guys, we had it twice in the red zone. Well, we could easily have had 14 more points. Well, you see the total yards in this game, 256 for Texas and 216 for Florida Atlantic. They have moved the football. First and 15 here, Smith in trouble, flushed out. Incomplete, intended down there on the sideline, looking for Bonner, Earl Thomas covering on the play. And you see the height of the receivers there for Florida Atlantic. Wow, when he comes across the field, he's, he's a sight. He's got great height. And 
Bonner goes 6-3. Jen is 6-2. Mr. Gene at 6-3. We saw Hauser, the tight end earlier, 6-5. Jamar Grant, 6-5. They got some tall fellows out there. Second and 15 now with 2.17 remaining. Hands it off. Good push up the middle, but still going to be third and long as Pierre, the ball carrier that time. Charles last year rushed for 782 yards and scored seven touchdowns. And 30 second clock running here. And clock continue to run here. Don't know if uh, Rusty Smith is going to throw to the ground or not. No, he's going to run play. Smith who threw for 32 touchdowns last year, looking for one here. Got a completion across the middle and a score. TD, Rob Hausler. Rob Hausler, the starting tight end in this ball game because Hal Harmon not able to play. Had a knee injury and he's out for the season. So Hausler going to be counted on to play the tight end spot for Florida Atlantic along with Jabari Grant. That's a good score there for Florida Atlantic to get it down here. And actually gets up and out of a possession that they've had with good field position. It's a nice throw by Smith. Gets in the middle of the secondary. Earl Thomas not able to get there in time to, to pull him down. 20 yards on the TD reception to Hausler. And now they come on with Leroy for the PAT. And it is good. So Florida Atlantic, a little faithful crowd that has followed them from South Florida up here, and as a result, they have cut it now to 18. It's 28 to 10. Well, decent protection up front for the quarterback as well. He stands in there and holding out the Texas defense. You're going to see Hauser come in here to the backside, gets inside the defense, and then the safety coming over the top, not able to get there in time, Earl Thomas. So nice play design there by Gary Nord to help his quarterback, Rusty Smith, dissect this Texas defense. And they're able to convert on third down five of eight times tonight. And now a 68-yard drive, five plays, just 145. You got a little famous guy in the house, Mr. McConaughey. I thought we are Marshall. Wait a minute. He's got a Texas shirt on. I think he's going to wear a Texas shirt for a long time. Yeah, I think so. Is uh, looking very comfortable here. 140. Remaining and the only problem with Fort Atlantic, they may have just scored too soon, Gary. They give Texas an opportunity and Mac Brown could say, all right, let's kind of work on our two minute drill. I don't know if Mac's going to be mad or not. It all depends on what he wants to do and try to try to take it down the field or just be content with uh, with a 28 to 10 lead. Take it into halftime. Leroy to kick it off here. And it is taken to the 20 and about there and then the defense stuffs him pretty good. A 17 yard return on the play for Williams. And Malcolm Williams getting the ball. They're bringing it back for, for Texas. First and 10 from the 21. So Colt McCoy will come on. You see Vondrell McGee joining him. And we'll see what they do with this final 133. Now will they go up tempo here? Will they try to push the ball down the field? I think a lot of that depends on what happens on first down. If they get a good, decent play here and they get the good positive yardage, they may try to go up tempo. Williams comes wide to the right. Colt McCoy, Irby. I mean, you would, you would have to believe that Colt McCoy, he hasn't really missed all day. The one incompletion was, was a bobble by the receiver that you got to believe. Why shouldn't you be able to go down and score here? He's yeah, certainly he, a smart enough quarterback. He's just surveying the defense here. Looks like a three man rush alignment for Florida Atlantic. Probably going to bring one of their linebackers, one of the perimeter players, but a three man front. And they're dropping eight now on the coverage. Obanaya, the receiver, he is tripped up. And now Texas will call a timeout. It's going to be short of the first down, a couple of yards there. And I hop into the sideline. A little stinger, probably. That's what it looks time like. Timeout. Texas. That's their first timeout this half. Two remaining for the long This will be a 30 here. second timeout. Hopefully, Open Eye is all right. As McGee got banged up a little bit earlier, but he was able to return all right and is in right now. Colt McCoy. 
leading Texas as we thought he would with a pair of TD passes and a TD run of his own. Pretty good job of protection the offensive line. He hasn't been touched all night unless he's really wanted to run into traffic uh, in the run game. So Colton McCoy being able to operate back there is line doing a good job and these receivers for the most part bringing in those passes. Well, Mac Brown told us that he's probably been as hard on this group in preseason spring ball and summer training as any is it. And I love the team, the way they've responded, the way they've really taken a business approach. And you certainly see Colt McCoy, no doubt, has got his game under control. Let's see what he comes up with now on a third and three at the 28. But the clock a factor, and they're trying to get that first down. And McGee. Now Florida Atlantic calls a timeout, yep. so Coach Snellenberger decides, hey, we're going to get this ball back, force Texas to punt the football. Timeout. Florida Atlantic. It's our last timeout this half. 40 seconds left or so, and we'll uh, see if Rush Rusty Smith can make some magic there. Bring the timeout. ball down the field. Well, Mac Brown talking about this team realizes there are some challenges with a young football team. Fun to try to teach and watch these guys grow. And when a Jamal Charles and, and um, uh, a guy like Jermichael Finley leave, it's just another opportunity for somebody to step up. And at Texas, if we've done our job, we should have someone ready to step into those positions. Uh, so it's fun to watch a, a new opportunity for a young guy that he hadn't had before. Well, so far so good. They'll kick it away here. First punt of the night for Texas. Tavius Polo, the deep man, has a little wiggle room. Closes in quickly and got tripped up at the 30-yard line. 36 or 35 seconds to go. Well, is that enough time for uh, Rusty Smith to work the ball down the field? No timeouts now. He's going to have to manage it to get to the outside of the field. Can't really afford to go inside too much. The clock will, will tick away on him. 49-yard punt by Gerland that time. Helped push him back a little. So here comes the junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Last year throwing for 3,688 yards. Got his first TD pass on their last possession of this season to Housley. Trying to set up a little screen and nothing doing on Edgecombe on the reception. Mm -hmm. Out of bounds with 20, you know, we're going to run it with 26, 27 seconds to go as Norton was covering. Now Jared Norton, nice job on the outside as a linebacker, taking care of the screen responsibility on the, on the running back. And Smith looked over to say, all right, I'm just going to let the clock wind down at this point. He had one look at it. And that will take care of this first half of play with Texas in its season opener. A 28 to 10 leader over Florida Atlantic. Touchdowns by Cody Johnson, Chris Obanaya, Shipley and McCoy. And Howard Schnellenberger has seen his club get a late TD on a pass from Smith to Hausler. But they're down 28 to 10 at the intermission. I think that Howard does. Let's send it down to Ahmad Brooks with Mac Brown. Coach, much has been made about the quarterbacks in the Big 12. Colt McCoy has certainly made a case tonight as being one of the best. 18 of 19, 160 yards, two touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. What are your thoughts on your quarterback? Well, Ahmad, he's really made a case for two years in the game now because he's a really good player. He's already won 20 games in Texas history, and he's, he's playing a great game tonight. And that's what we've seen in spring practice and camp. Give, your defense has only given up 13 yards, played fairly well, new and improved. What are your thoughts on your defense? Well, I thought they played great because they kept them out of the end zone till that last drive, and we've got to play better the last five minutes of the second half, and now we, gotta, we get the ball to start the third quarter, so hopefully we can get back on the uh, roll we were with our momentum. Coach, best wishes, second half. Guys, back to you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks to you. Coach Mac Brown. Yes, Vince Young, that jersey retired prior to the game. We'll have that ceremony for you when we come back. Texas in control, 28-10. Fuel efficiency. Durability. Safety. Of all the great things Nissan brings you, 
this. In Austin, Texas, with a 28-10 lead over Florida Atlantic. Bill Land and Gary Reason with the up top. Kevin Durant, former Texas basketball standout, now doing the same in the NBA with the Oklahoma City, what will they be called? And part of the big ceremony here tonight with the pregame action that centered around Vince Young, the former Texas quarterback who saw his number 10 jersey retired here tonight. If you didn't have a chance to catch it early, we thought we'd give you the opportunity to watch it now. So let's take a look back as he was on. And now, if you would, please direct your attention to the southwest side of the playing field. As of this day, August the 30th, 2008, the uniform number 10 of the winningest quarterback in Longhorn football history is officially retired. Head coach Mac Brown is presenting a framed jersey to today's honoree, former Longhorn quarterback and current Tennessee Titans quarterback, number 10, Vince Young. Coach Brown for taking the opportunity to come get me out of Houston, Texas, to bring me to Austin. <laughs> I want to thank the loss, Coach Raw, and I definitely want to thank our UT fans. I want to tell y'all, without the love, without I mean, just, you know, y'all heart, y'all spirit, and the way that y'all carry yourself around the nation. I just want to tell y'all, y'all mean a whole lot to me. I'm going to keep being a role model, and I'm going to keep representing the University of Texas till I die. Ladies and gentlemen, now officially forever young, number 10, Vince Young. Great time before the game for a great player, Vince Young. Congratulations to number 10. The Longhorns lead it here at the half. It is 28 to 10. We'll be back with a couple of special guests talking a little Olympics. It's 28-10 on College Football Saturday, Texas in control. Saturday, it's 28 to 10. Longhorns, 11th ranked in the country, laying it on Florida Atlantic. And we are glad here at halftime to have the opportunity to talk about the Olympics. Yes, University of Texas involved in that. Bubba Thornton to my left, the men's track coach and, and the Olympic track coach over for the U.S. team. And on my right here is Kim Bracken, the UT women's swimming coach who coached the Zimbabwe team and had a gold medal winner there. First of all, just talk about the Olympic experience in general and what you brought back from that. The Olympic experience for me is it's no 
matter what country you're, you're representing, I think there's just so much pride in being there with a group of the best athletes in the world. And it's uh, to go into the cafeteria every day and to go to different events and see these elite athletes who spent so much time in their sport is just, it's outstanding. It's, it's, a, it's a memory I'll have forever. And then to be with an athlete you can win four medals is, uh, that makes the, the kind of the cherry on top of the cake, I think. Bubba, of course the track and field got a lot of attention, kind of assess our performance over there. Well, we had the most medals, the most gold medals for track and field, and it was an unbelievable experience to look at the podium, see three of your countrymen, to look at the flag ceremony and see three of the American flags raised at the same time. What a feeling. I, I know it was a shot of apple pie to everybody in the country. Yeah, I think if there is something that brings this country together, it is the Olympics that I talk to people that are on their couch just screaming as if they could be heard over there, particularly in some of those relays at that event. When you're in track and field, it's a whole different deal when all of these athletes now have their own coaches. How do you handle that and massage that to oversee the whole program and keep everybody happy? Well, there's a lot of communication. Uh, and there's going to be athletes that don't have coaches, so you're still helping with the focus, the motivation, and the logistics. And uh, when they close the call door, it's closed. If you're one second late, you don't run. So big responsibility to make sure that the athletes are there and ready to go. Kim, in swimming, I know my reaction was when uh, Coventry won the medal with Zimbabwe swimming. What's the connection there? And tell us a little bit about the background there. Well, Kirsty swam with me when I was at Auburn. And when I left Auburn to come to Texas, uh, Kirsty finished up her degree and, and decided to come out here and train with me. So um, her, her primary coach when she was a young girl retired after uh, the Sydney Games. So I went with her in 2004, and thankfully they asked me again to go in 2008. So we've, we've been together eight years. It's been a great relationship. Well, that really had to be special to have that opportunity to uh, go to Beijing with her. It was awesome. And you know, their country, Zimbabwe, they just, they embraced me and, and uh, kind of, I, I feel like I'm one of them for a week or two. Um, but you know, it was one of the highlights for me was also watching our American Texas swimmers and Americans in general perform so well. I mean, it was by far the best meet that swimming has ever had, and it was it was wonderful to be on the deck and experience that. Final question to both of you. Give me what you thought of just the whole presentation from being in Beijing, whether the politics entered in, or just what you'll remember about that and, and the way you were treated there. I remember being treated extremely well. People were very friendly, very willing to help. Um, I think everyone kind of knew their phrase and stuck with that. And if they couldn't help you, they, they found somebody else. But I thought it was a great experience. I think China did an amazing job putting on the games. Bubba? I'd have to echo. People were friendly. Uh, the Olympic spirit was at an all-time high. And I would hate to have to follow up this party because <laughs> it was unbelievable. Well, if anybody can do it, it's probably the Brits. Good luck over in London. <laughs> thanks to both of you. Congratulations on your success. Thanks, Bill. Thank All right, thanks, so Bubba. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Stay with us here. It's halftime at UT. The Longhorns on College Football Saturday with a 28-10 lead over Florida Atlantic. We'll be right back. Places guys shouldn't go. And then there's Sport Clips, a place just for guys where you can get a great haircut and catch the game. At Sport Clips, it's all about you. At Sport Clips, guys win. Well, this man here, Matthew McConaughey, a huge Longhorn supporter. Matthew, what brought you out today? A uh, few things, man. First game of the season, ready to get the season kicked off right. I've got uh, my girl here, and i got my son Levi to his first Longhorn game. Nice. He checked out in good Longhorn gear. And uh, we're also in town. I'm going to run the human race tomorrow, the 10K. And then we open it up, first JK Living homegrown film, Surfer Dude, exclusively here in Austin this Friday, September 5th. Now tell us a little bit about your movie. It's, it's about to debut. Um, how was it doing the movie? And what are your thoughts yeah, on it? It was fun and it was hard, man. We didn't have much money, so we were the underdogs. But we got out there, we made it in Malibu, California. Made it with all friends that I met right here going to school. Everybody I made the film with, I met here on this campus, uh, whatever, 92, 93. And we've been working together. And we finally got our first movie out. And that surfer dude, man. So that's the best part about it. We kind of made it with family. Congratulations so, on that. Thank you. I also want to ask you about Vince Young. Since today yeah. is his day, you know him very well. Yeah. What are some of your favorite memories of 
the legend that he has become yeah, now. Man, I mean, everyone remembers the biggie against USC to win the championship. But if you track it back over that time, I don't know if it's one specific thing, but the way he handles himself and the way he handled himself on the field, he always had uh, that unsaid thing, man, where he knew his head was always high. He always knew. He, he, everyone around him got that much more confident just by looking at him. Absolutely. And he wasn't the guy that ran around and had to pump everybody up. All you had to do was be near him and, and look at him. And when he got out there, I don't know what he was saying in the huddle, but you could see what he was doing after he got the ball snapped to him. And, uh, and now to see the, you know, the man that he's become and like tonight retiring his jersey, how cool is that to be around? You know, you, it's easier sometimes when you see legends in the past, you know, play here. But when you're around and it's live, and you see a living legend do it, beautiful. It's nice to retire his number. Well, you are certainly a legend. We thank you for your time. Thanks for bringing out your family. Yeah, we'll right. be right back. University of Texas, Florida Welcome. Atlantic, after these messages. Welcome back. Second half, ready to get underway here in Austin, Texas, a 28-10 leader after the first half. Bill and Gary Reasons, Bob Brooks with you here on College Football Saturday. 28-10 Longhorns, and they will receive the second-half kickoff as well as Cosby and Shipley are deep. Roy's kick and is taken by Shipley. Weaves his way up just shy of the 30-yard line. And Obadiah, I beg your pardon, as we'll take a look at the first-half stats. And Texas, first downs, 18-11. The big factor, of course, is the rushing yardage or lack thereof of Florida Atlantic. Texas has run the ball pretty well with Obanaya doing a good job back there. And also McGee and Colton Boyce chipped in as well. Blaine Irby, big, big, uh, big night. Six catches already in the first half, helping Colton Boy to have a pretty impressive debut here for his junior campaign. And Texas first and ten from the 30 to start things off. McCoy flushed out of the pocket, shows you his wheels. All the way across the 40. Oh, and there's another late hit. Just no reason for that from Joseph. And he knocks him into Mad Dog, too. You don't want to do that. <laughs> no. Get him, Matt. Mad Dog will take him on. We're talking about <laughs> Coach Madden without any gear. Oh, my goodness. I'd take him versus anybody. Watch on the sideline here. You're going to see the shove right there. And watch Mad Dog. He's right there. Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll take care of business, but... Uh, Colt stepping out of bounds, and that's a late hit, guys. You don't need to do that. Even though it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't major, but you know what? You, you, you lose you your balance. The footing is not good on the sidelines because it's got a tarp over there, and players slip on it, and that, that can really cause some problems. And Prince Joseph, a leader on that defense, really probably knows better than that. But uh, each team trying to protect their own here. Maybe people saw our telecast the other night with Baylor quarterback Robert Griffin, who came to the sideline, did a little dance, and headed up the field for about 20 yards. So sometimes you're thinking, well, he looks like he's going out, but he's not yet. But you still got to be able to pull off. Yeah, you got to pull back. You got to be able to judge it on the sideline. It just takes a little bit of poise defensively. Well, anyway, after that, first and 10 now. And Shipley connects for more. He dances down the sideline before he is knocked out. And Texas, on two plays, is knocking on the door again. You know, uh, when, when Colt McCoy was a freshman here at the University of Texas, there were some who were questioning his arm strength. No doubt about this throw right here that Colt McCoy has plenty of arm strength to throw a good tight spiral. This is across the field to the outside, and that ball's right on the money. McCoy back to the live action here, and scampers inside the 10 down near the 6 as Greg Joseph makes the play. And that's some of the things we're going to see this year with no huddle situation. They go up-tempo, they slow the tempo down, never huddle. They just stay at the line of scrimmage, and they can do that. They can keep the same personnel grouping out there. Texas pretty versatile with their personnel groups that they put in the football game. And Texas now. Three plays, 63 yards on this drive here as Vondrell McGee cuts it up. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Longhorns. How about that? Four plays, and a Ford Atlantic had any idea of carrying a little momentum? Forget about it. 
Well, this power run into the outside. Watch number 19 on the outside, Blaine Irby, get his block and hold that right there, and he runs inside of it very well. Good job of sealing the edge and then blocking on the outside with, with Blaine Irby. Mondrell McGee finds the end zone once again. So McGee gets his first touchdown, and Texas trying to tack on another one here as Hunter Lawrence for the point after, and it is good. And the Longhorns now bump it to 35 to 10, and it took just 104 into the third quarter. of the Big 12 Conference is on Big 12 Showcase. Only Big 12 Showcase takes you on location every week for unparalleled coverage of all the athletic programs from across the conference. From the latest news and highlights to exclusive features and interviews, no one is more dedicated to the Big 12 than FSN. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, Big 12 Showcase brings you year-round coverage you won't get anywhere else. Big 12 Showcase, Fridays and Saturdays on FSN Southwest. Tonight's game is brought to you by Time Warner, the power of you. It's actually been the power of the University of Texas with a 35 to 10 scoring after the kickoff to the second half. Nice drive. Yeah, very impressive. Four plays, 70 yards, 104. And the Longhorns with 13.56 to go in the third quarter will kick it off here. Texas. Justin Tucker once again kicking it off. Edgecombe from the three. 15-20, got a seam. Momentum carried him out of bounds. Just shy of the 35-yard line, I believe. And we'll take a look at 32 yards on the return. Here's Fort Atlantic's work in the first half. Yeah, the first series of fumble, the snap over the head of the quarterback when they're taking it down, almost uh, have an opportunity to score, and then punt another interception. So late in the second quarter, though, had a little confidence build there with that touchdown that Rusty Smith was able to engineer with his football team. So let's see what they think come out in the second half here to have that same spark. Smith in the first half, 12 of 25 for 226 yards, one score, one pick. And this time to Pierre. Pierre is stopped near the 37-yard line. Roderick Muckleroy, a junior out of Hallsville, Texas, with a tackle, had 67 tackles last year. We like his work in the spring and again in the early drills this fall. Man, he's been solid too. 38 of 39 games started here. He's really been a guy that's been a, a longtime player for this Texas defense. Illegal motion. 46 offense decline. Second down. And they'll just take the take the result of the play here. You see Gary Nord hand of the playoff. There it is. Quarterback Rusty Smith. See the numbers on him for the first half. Not the one touchdown throw with the interception on the tip ball. Smith, who became a starter as a freshman, didn't go the whole way, but started at the beginning of the year at the end of the year, and then last year, a Sun Belt Player of the Year award for his talents. He's got his work cut out for him here. Pierre stuffed for a loss on the play at the 33-yard line. And there's Melton, Henry Melton. Used to be a fullback for the Longhorns, now getting to, getting to be that full-time defensive end, anchoring that side of the line for him. Got to play off the blocks and get back there. Third and 12 now. Will Muschamp, the new defensive coordinator, looking on as Smith going to work for the Owls. Oh, what a grab across the middle. A one-hand stab by Jamari Grant. Tell you what, Florida Atlantic has some pitch and catch. Well, they do. They've got the pitch and catch. They've got some long bodies to throw to. This is going to be about a half a yard short. I'd be very surprised if Coach Stoneberger does not go for this. You've got to create a little momentum. Watch that catch. Left hand pulls it in. and They're going to call it fourth and one. And Smith 
Oh boy, it's a matter of the spot. Yeah. Just a matter of the spot here where they put this. I think it may be short from what I'm seeing. Both line judges coming in, and I'm right here on about the 45 yard line looking straight down the field, and it looks to me as if this thing is going to be put down about a half a foot short of the first down. Now you've got Coach Schnellenberger on the field taking a closer look and thinks that I think the Texas defense did what they needed to do to hold Rusty Smith back from getting that first down. Well, and some might think, well, hey, it's kind of a gamble. You're down 35 to 10. No, you, you, at this point. No, you got to go for it in this situation, no doubt about that. And you got to feel that your club can pick up a yard like that, and they didn't. As a result, you give Texas the ball back on the 45 yard line. Well, and you put number 12 back there too, the quarterback. Yeah. See the push here? Defensive line by Texas doing what they do. They actually jump over the top. You got a bunch of Longhorns there trying to pile on Rusty Smith, and he just never got going. And John Childs comes back in with McCoy. That Q package, as they call it, with the two quarterbacks on the field at the same time. There's Childs up at the top. First and 10 for Texas at the 45 of the Isles from Florida Atlantic. McCoy nearly picked off. Should have been picked yeah, off. Yeah, France Joseph had the best shot at it. 131 tacklers for the first team all conference pick last year, and he's thinking, how'd I drop that one? Well, he was reading Colt McCoy all the way and just dropped out to that zone, and almost like he was the intended receiver. Nobody else in the screen. There he is. <laughs> Looking for Childs. Yeah. Childs comes out for this play. Second and 10 from the 45. McGee. Tackled near the line of scrimmage. Corey Small showing me something as a, as a cornerback. He's come up and made a number of tackles on the outside. Covering guys out there pretty well. Pretty, pretty heady player. I see what they like in him. He's a. 5'10, 190. Looks like he's their best cover guy. He's the anchor in the secondary form, and he's definitely an NFL prospect. So, third down now, and call it 11. Colt McCoy. Gonna keep it. Still looking. Unloads. Got a man. Incomplete. Oh, my. Cosby nearly made an acrobatic grab. What a throw by McCoy, considering what he had to go through to get to that. You know, he had a lot of pressure on him on the outside. You know, Colt McCoy has been out running the Florida Atlantic defensive front all night. This time he takes his life into his own hands, trying to hold that ball up there to get it to Quan Cosby. And when Cosby goes up for this, I think he should have turned his hands around the opposite way and pulled the ball in instead of trying to catch it up on top. And Colt does a good job of getting it out there. See what I'm seeing here? The hands are up. If you turn those hands over, he can pull that ball in. He Bill put those and Jackson hands. put the pressure on him. I think you're right that this may show it a little bit better. We'll take a look here as, as the Cosby goes up. And timeout. Fort Atlantic. The first timeout this half. So the Owls earn a timeout here. And we'll take a break as well. With it fourth down and 11 coming up for Texas. Owls. Call a T.O. We'll be right back on College Football Saturday, 35-10, Longhorn. There are many things to discover at the University of Texas at Austin. Art, science, curious thinkers, open minds, and quite possibly, yourself. What starts here changes the world. Friday night. Welcome back. Kind of interesting scenario here. It's Texas with a fourth and 11. Fort Atlantic called the timeout, and now Texas shows that they're going to go for it. Yeah, now, well, extra time to think about it. Yeah. Coach Brown decided, hey, why don't we go for it here? I don't know if they originally had planned to be punt short or not. punt. There you and go, a little pooch punt. Colt McCoy could do that. So, and they down it at about the two-yard line. How about that? 
How talented is Colt McCoy? Now, uh, you know, he can do it all. <laughs> Remember early in the ball game, first punt by Florida Atlantic. They kick it right into the end zone, about the same spot that uh, that Texas lined up with that football. And now this is how you do it. You try to pin them back deep and good coverage there. Knocking the ball back. Is that Cosby getting down there to get the football? Shipley. Shipley. Okay. Great hustle Jordan by Shipley. Jordan Shipley. Yeah. And as a result, they put Florida Atlantic in a real hole. So Florida Atlantic, if we go back to their last possession, they don't get it on that fourth and short. They do stop Texas, but it's a loss of about 44 yards. <laughs> now they operate with that end zone crowd. You got four seconds on the play clock. A better hustle. Smith in the end zone, another timeout. Well, why would you take a timeout? Uh, You're only going to lose a half yard. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Florida yeah. Atlantic. Your second timeout this half. Yeah, you got to know where you're at. And you're a junior quarterback with that experience. I'm sorry, you, you got to know better to make that play. I'll take the penalty, won't you? Yeah, I mean. Well, you can't go back too much further. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Coach no, Nillenberg is kind of going down to out. figure out what's going on here. And he said, I didn't teach anybody that. So they have one timeout remaining. Now they got another series here, so they might use that one, so. <laughs> Now, Will Muschamp, the uh, defensive coordinator, He's in last season what they gave up and the running game. And well, that was that, pretty, they were pretty good yeah, last year against the run. In the country. No That's doubt about fine. that. It was the it was the slinging the ball kind of thing happening last year against the defense and got them working there. And Florida Atlantic is not going to present the running game that they're going to see in the Big 12. But just the same, you're stopping anything they're putting out there. And that's all you can ask of your guys. So he's got to be pleased with that. Now let's see here. And at first and ten. Smith from the end zone. Fires it incomplete. Intended on that time for Lester Jen. Gene, I should say. Well, Lester turned in. I think that uh, Chris Smith thought he might have been, excuse me, Rusty Smith might have been thinking he was going to turn out. Inside shoulder, can't get to the football. In a game that has been somewhat of a methodical whipping of Florida Atlantic, the fans choose the opportunities to get into it. They're kind of doing that now, like, all right, we got them backed up here. And second and 10. Five wideouts, empty backfield. They come after him. The look oh. it is complete. They're trying to get out of his end zone. And no signal yet. I don't think it's going to be. They're hoping for safety, but his forward progress was stopped near the two. But great work by the Longhorn defense. Well, this is a good job here getting to the quarterback and continuing the pressure. And then you just re re react. Good hit there. Who strikes him? Is that Jared Norton again? He's been hitting people all over the field yes. tonight. And also Brian Arakpo on the sideline, defensive end, out of the ball game. They're tending to him on the sideline. Third and ten now. Smith got a little more time here, and it is complete to get him out of severe danger. Jamari Grant, who last year had 16 grabs for 127 yards, makes the reception here. Quiet the crowd down and give them a little more room to operate as it moves the chains for a first down. Well, I know Rusty Smith is happy to be out of that end zone. Yeah. You don't want to be working back there too much against a speedy defense like Texas. And good job by Grant of hanging on to that football. They've been thrown to him a lot tonight and going to need more production for him in the tight end. Tight end is a big plot, big weapon in that offense. And just take a look at Arakpo on the sideline. Don't know what's wrong with him. Maybe just need a little break, trying to get some gas in his tank. He's the preseason All-American, one of the real leaders of this defensive group. Here is Smith. And again, incomplete, trying to hook up with William Rose out of the backfield. You take a little gas off of that one. That was that was a high heater coming down to him, and just no way to pull that ball in. Shot Bobino was covering on the play. Bobino, a senior out of Lamarck. He has started 39 of 40 games here at University of Texas. An honorable mention all-conference pick last year. It's that kind of experience, and with people like Arakpo up front, 
Melton even, that gives this defense some hope that these young but talented guys in the secondary can come along quickly. And a pitch out, Edgecombe runs out of room on the sideline, shy of the 20. Let's see where they mark it. Ryan Palmer makes a stop. A couple of times they've run that play tonight. A little misdirection, kicking it out to the outside and trying to take the aggressiveness of the Texas defense this way and then come back around the outside. You see Keiston Randall there. Number 91 pursuing well from his defensive end spot. Owls are 6 of 10 on third down conversions. They've averaged 18 yards of play on third down. Third and seven here. Now there's a rack pull. Well covered that time. He had great pressure on him and a Texas player. Mm, that's Brian Rackpo. Rackpo, yeah, yeah, down. I think he's got a cramp maybe in that calf or the, or the, or the hamstring. He went through the defense, the offensive tackle and got to the quarterback. He hit Rusty Smith. But Gary, sometimes you talk about the heat and even though evening here in the 90s and that sometimes people misunderstand. These guys are in great shape. But that doesn't mean that you can't suffer from dehydration. Well, there's no doubt about that. And, you know, Brian Arakpo, a guy who's his body is just tremendous and probably got low body fat. You know, the heat, some guys aren't used to sweating like that. And when you take that low body fat and you have sweat, then that's going to cause, you know, potential cramping in those muscles. And hopefully that's all it is with Brian Arakpo. And get back out there and, you know, he's strong. He's, a, he's an athletic guy. Peterson back to punt. Stands inside his own 10 yard line. They block it. And Texas falls on it inside the 20 yard line. Well, they've shown a little bit of everything tonight. Ben Wells, I believe, is the man that came up with it. See who got the block coming in on that far side. That was their safety. Is that Thomas? Earl, Earl Thomas, yeah. the freshman. True freshman, excuse me, redshirt freshman coming in there inside and getting that block punt, and then they try to pick it up and take it to the end zone. But a great job coming in there inside as Ben Wells gets a recovery. There's Thomas getting the congratulations as Texas making big plays. And now, want to get another TD. Rounding the corners, Vondrell McGee. McGee, on the corner. McGee takes it inside the 10 near the nine yard line. Just go ahead and run it here. Use the power, use the strength that you have. Pretty good job of holding up outside, blocking. James Kirkendall trying to lead the way for Von Drell McGee, number 11. Hold this one up with 8.33 remaining in the third Notice quarter. Full start, 64 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Bill, you got offensive coordinator Greg Davis calling the plays here for Colt McCoy in this offense, and he's upstairs, obviously, and he's getting the plays called down to uh, Major Applewhite, who's signaling the plays in there to Colt McCoy. And that little that little communication, I think, is going to work well throughout the season with uh, with Greg. And you got a quarterback on the field who's experienced in this offense, and when you got a sudden change like that, you want to capture that momentum and continue into the end zone. McCoy delivers to. The seven yard line. Joseph makes the tackle there on Cosby. There's Major Applewhite on the side line. He's getting the signal in there to Colton McCoy. He's, he's listening to Greg Davis in the press box. And they're working together. First year back with uh, as a coach here with the Longhorns. He's been on a fast track in his coaching career. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, he is headed for. Head coaching success and probably won't take too long to get there. Texas on the third and short keeps it, pushes it forward as McCoy gets the first down. Trying to get a little push there and you fly over. You gotta hit him up high if you can. George Allen going airborne, number 50. Boy, Cedric Dockery, one that gave him that rocket boost. And as a result, first and goal to go. McCoy, wide open. Irby, touchdown, Texas. Blaine Irby, a lot of grabs early, and now gets his first touchdown of the season.
McCoy gets his third touchdown pass of the night. Now yeah, Blaine Irby does a nice job getting outside and great protection for Colton McCoy. Quick easy step and throw. He sees his tight end release out there. Nobody covering him early and just kind of muscles it in the end zone. No contact at all. Blaine Irby what is it seven catches on the night bill and now the touchdown. Going to be a pretty good weapon in this offense. Seven for 62 yards and a touchdown. And Hunter Lawrence on for the PAT to try to stay perfect in that category. And it is good. So Texas takes that block punt and quickly turns it into seven. We'll be right back on College Football Saturday. If you and largely in part of Colt McCoy and how he's played tonight, this touchdown here is going to go to Blaine Irby, who's his tight end. He's going to—he's lined up inside. He's going to go outside. He's going to get a little rub here by both of his receivers to the outside. Gets it clear, so no defensive player can go out there to him. So clean and easy throw for Colt McCoy. Get it out to Mr. Irby for his first tight, his first touchdown of the evening. And McCoy right to the headset says McCoy, 22 of 25, 201 yards. Three touchdowns. Just a walk in the park. Wow. What a night. Hunter Lawrence with a kickoff and taken on the five. And Blanchard bringing it out. About the 39. Let's send it down to Ahmad Brooks. We're joined here with um, Stacy Schmidt. Vice President of Public Affairs for Time Warner Cable. We just wanted to ask you, we thank you and appreciate you for sponsoring the, the pay-per-view game today. Why are y'all, why do y'all get involved with things like this? Well, this is a good partnership for us and uh, what a great way to start the college football season and to be here with University of Texas. Um, so it's a great way to get football kicked off. In particular, what responsibility or what reason, what's your driving force for wanting to be associated with the University of Texas? Well, University of Texas, of course, is a great partnership. Um, the athletic department's great, and uh, it's great for all of our customers, uh, cable, uh, internet, or phone. So it's a, it's a great win-win for all of us. Thank you again, Tom Warner. Guys, back to you. The power of you. All right, thank there you. you. And uh, new quarterback. Jeff Van Camp, 6'5", 210, redshirt sophomore from Gulf Breeze, Florida. He comes in for Rusty Smith. And they really like his athletic ability. He's got a big arm. I'll try to use it right here. Incomplete. Looking downfield for Lester Jean. Van Camp saw some action last year. And certainly a guy that may want to get an opportunity to get ready anymore. You, you like to play one, but you better have two or three ready. <laughs> well, you definitely need to have two or three. You know, they're a passing offense and not, the, not a run-style offense where that quarterback's going to be out there and running the option, kind of like Colt McCoy. We've been seeing him tonight. But, you know, you see Rusty Smith trying to work it in, trying to get him to go up-tempo, kind of pick things up. Crowd making some noise here on a third and seven. Van Camp scoots through the defenders, keeps the football, but it's going to be shy of the first down. It closed quickly as he got near that mark. Good effort there. Good job of running the football. Pretty much upright, though, as you go through the line of scrimmage. Kind of disregard for his body, so it's going to bring up a fourth down situation here for Florida Atlantic. So it's like they're going to punt the football away. So I'm talking to Coach Nord there on the sideline. I'd like to get him in there with live action, live bullets flying around him, get him some, uh, get him some reps. All right. There's Peterson to kick it away again. No block this time, and Peterson, good kick, and sends it out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. As Texas will be backed up near the 10-yard line, it appears. So an outstanding kick that time of 42 yards. So he, he is coachable. Yeah. <laughs> He's learned, hasn't he? Hey, we were talking about Major Applewhite, certainly one of the all-time great quarterbacks and great leaders here at Texas. Take a look back at the 01 Big 12 championship game after Chris Sims had gotten injured. Touchdown pass. And remember this play, I was there at the game as he takes it down the middle and then at the Colorado sideline know what he thought of him. <laughs> 
gamer. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he's quite a player. Yeah, he's talked about his athletic ability, not being the most gifted guy, but he's a guy that got it done with his smarts, and he's doing that now. He's getting it done as a coach with his smarts and trying to teach young quarterbacks, Colt McCoy, one of them, and John Childs, and working with Greg Davis. And I know he's happy to be back here at the University of Texas. Childs to the 15. The 17 yard line and Texas set up with a third and short situation now. Well, I don't know if we're going to this will be the last we've seen of Colton McCoy in this ball game, but certainly want to get a chance for John Childs to get in there and run the, the, the full gamut of the offense, whether it's running the football or throwing the football. Get him to operate back there. Well, Childs last year as a true freshman. He ran for 72 yards in the Rice game. He ended up on the year with 191 yards rushing and two touchdowns. And his passing has certainly improved. Last year, he only threw the ball nine times. It was one of nine. It's something they worked on a lot in the spring. And yeah, it's not easy, Gary, because he is so valuable in so many ways. If you're going to put him on the field with McCoy and do other situations, that also takes away a little bit of his development as a quarterback right yeah it really does because you know you're not sitting back there you know repetitions at, at any position in football is really what's key and so consistency and persistency of what you do as far as how you're preparing to, to play that position you know, these guys practice plays every single day and the more you're able to do that especially in a live game situation you're going to be more proficient at it but when you're turning when you're changing being asked to do a lot of different things as John Childs is not going to be able to perhaps hone those skills as a, as a true quarterback. So as the punt is taken care of, we'll uh, take a look at some of the other action. The Big 12 as this real opening day and an illegal procedure against Texas. Before we do that, we'll see if they sort that out. Legal formation. Kicking team. Five yard penalty will be added to the end of the dead ball spot. All right, let's go to the First scores. Down. We'll let them sort that out and we'll check out what's been happening. Uh, you caught Thursday night. Wake Forest, every bit of the 23rd ranked team of the country. Oklahoma State. That's a big non conference yeah. win for Washington, for Oklahoma State. That's an opportunity for them to get their season moving, moving in the right direction. In Seattle on that one. And. Chattanooga and Oklahoma have been delayed. I saw an early score where they were up pretty significantly. I don't know if that's correct or not, but we'll see. And Texas Tech over Washington, Eastern Washington. See Kansas, a healthy lead. Kansas State the same on North Texas. Back to the play here. And three forty to go here in the third quarter. Again, the backup quarterback, Jeff Van Camp, is on the field for Florida Atlantic. We'll come back to some of those scores when we get a second. Van Camp sets up, got time, and incomplete. And Curtis Brown there in the coverage. Playing pretty closely on the receiver. Jennifer Williams. Curtis Brown, a sophomore from Gilmer, Texas. Trying to create a little bit of depth at the cornerback position. And now it's third and 11 from the 45 for Florida Atlantic. Van Camp. Hit hard as he throws, and it is incomplete. Trying to hook up on the sideline with Alfred Morris. Aaron Lewis was the man putting pressure on him. Watch Aaron Lewis as he fights through inside there, splits the double team and gets contact on the quarterback as he throws the football. It's a good job by defensive lineman putting some pressure inside. So Peterson to punt it away. Last time in this situation had a great punt out of the 10 yard line. Cosby 
And again, it rolls into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. So will bring it back out to the 20. And that's where the Longhorns will operate with just 2.58 to go in the third quarter. And Texas, a comfortable 42 to 10 lead. And Colt McCoy comes back on. And I thought he might have been done for the evening. Give Childs a chance to play, but uh, I guess that they're just going to get them both, get them more, some more quality reps. Colt, 22 of 25, 201 yards, three TDs, and he has run for 60 yards on just seven carries and has scored. Sets up here. Shipley. You don't see that very often. Good Shipley, a great receiver. Make it second and ten for Texas. Now the fans here who came out to open this uh, this big stadium now, the largest in the state of Texas in college football, 90,000 strong here tonight. Pretty pretty. I guess they've got to be pretty pleased with how the Longhorns have been playing. McCoy keeps it here on a second and ten. Scrambles up the middle to about the 24, and Josh Savage makes the stop there for the Owls. So third and six. Getting a little bit, kind of got to get used to the teams don't huddle anymore. They're used to having a little pace. You go to the huddle, you break the huddle. That's not happening at all. First couple of games that we've been at, Bill. Yeah, and McCoy keeps, got the first down and out of bounds near the 32 yard line. You know, this is the second game we've worked with, the, the Baylor Wake Forest game the other night. And We've been very interested to see how the new 40-second clock would work. I, so far, and what I've been able to catch on television earlier today, I think most teams have made the adjustment pretty well. Yeah, and they're just going to go no huddle. <laughs> and it's been good for the game, yeah, though. it is. And you just Don't line you up out there, and you just got to go with it. The pace seems to be picking up a little bit. The offense can dictate the pace of the game, and I think overall it may hurt some defensive substitutions as this moves forward. You're going to have to get better athletes on the field. You may not have those... That great pass rush that you'd like to have because you have to deal with uh, personnel groups. McCoy again keeps, steps out of bounds, and it's almost effortless at Colt McCoy what he's doing to, to just run around and run outside. Now I don't have I don't have a, a stopwatch on him, but uh, you know, he's got to be about a four five four six guy at worst. And he is now their leading rusher with 84 yards rushing. Just seamless, just easy getting around the edge. Just smart. Now he's going to take one down the, down the pipe. How about that? Just needed one. He gets 11. Oh, yeah, You're going to get the 100 yard <laughs> mark. You got 10 on that pickup. Greg Joseph and Ed Alexander were there. I don't know if Greg Davis is liking this. You see the hole here. Takes it straight down the pipe of the defense here. And gets a little, little help there. But really not getting a lot of contact. So McCoy 11 for 94 now. And Texas first down at the 46. First down to 10 at the 46 yard line of Florida Atlantic. Shipley the completed pass and Shipley leans forward to get every yard to near the 39 at Alexander covering there. I think Chris Hall's doing a nice job at center number 71. For Texas, just kind of running things in the middle there, taking care of his quarterback. Good snaps tonight, calling out the signals of the offensive line and identifying the personnel and then sliding right or left as need be on an even even defense. Second and three. And oh, nice lead block by Hall. Yeah. Obanaya this time with a carry. Chris Obanaya and another first down as he's to the 35 yard line before Jameer Johnson, Richard freshman from Wesley Chapel floor to the tackler for the Owls. Same good things about old Chris Hall. What did he do? Just pulls on the even front. Nobody in front of him. What that means that he's not covered and he pulls around the outside and it's a good cut block on the outside. Get athletic linemen, big guys that can run like that. Can do a lot of things offensively. McCoy. Ah, oh, catch. What a grab that time by Cosby. Look like they've done that before. No, they have. They've have done it quite a bit. And Cosby and Colt McCoy, they've had a pretty good duo here the last couple of seasons. And 
Nice job throwing it outside. Good footwork. Good concentration. That was a perfect pass. The only guy that's going to catch it is going to be your guy. And Crosby with the grab, and that ends the third quarter. So Texas with McCoy running and throwing its way down the field, well on their way to another touchdown as we end the third quarter, and the Longhorns up by 32, 42 to 10. McCoy put on some show, and they've spread the wealth. You're watching College Football Saturday. It's all Longhorns after three. Saturday morning. Okay. Welcome back, Texas. 42-10 as we start the fourth quarter here at Darrell K. Well, Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. Bill and Jerry Reasons. I'll put you with you. College football Saturday and McGee and a first to 10 from the 21 going for six out of the end zone that time as he tried to hook up to Shipley again. Yeah, five wide package that time and just Colt rolls to the near sideline which got three receivers and a little touch pass out there just using speed on speed trying to find an open receiver. Just a little bit outside. McCoy 24 of 29 for 222 yards. Watch for your after on the field and bingo. Still has got a smile on his face. That's good. Well, watch where you're squatting down there. Second and ten now for McCoy. Hands it off this time. Nothing doing for McGee or Obanaya. And Savage on the tackle. Savage in on the stop for the Owls. Jeff Savage, a redshirt junior in there. So third long situation bring him out put a little more speed on the field you get a pass rush look at the numbers here for Colt 94 yards rushing just a day at the office four touchdowns 10 plays 58 yards on this drive so far it is now a third and 11 almost being motion sets up in the slot on the near side and McCoy got all day now he's flushed out a bit he's going to keep it and looking for the first down probably has it I think he does I tell you wow what a play well look at the protection first and foremost Texas Longhorns offensive front not allowing anybody from Florida Atlanta to get back to their quarterback just look at Cole McCoy back there if you just put a stopwatch on I bet he's got about seven or eight seconds back there without any problem he's the one who decides to roll out he decides, okay, I need to run this or get it on my own. Oh, he fumbles the football out. It's going to be a little short there, a couple of yards short. I thought we might have had it, but third and third, and, it's going to be fourth and two, and they're going to go for it here. I mean, he looked like he hobbled a bit. I don't know if he caught his foot or whatever, but certainly well enough to stay on. And fourth and two, and McCoy dodges a defender here. Flag is thrown near the line, and McCoy has the first down pending the flag. And usually you'd think a hold in that situation, wouldn't you? Myers made the tackle. You know, and I'm watching Colt McCoy operate tonight, Bill, and I'm thinking he's got another gear. Holding. 71 offense. 10-yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Chris Hall got called for it. He's got a little extra pep in his step. He's obviously in, in great condition, ready to enter this season, and every play just seems effortless to him to, to outrun the defense, make, what, make the plays that he needs to. Throwing the ball very, very accurately tonight. It's a great, uh, great first ball game for us, for Colt McCoy here to start the season. Well, the National Freshman of the Year when he throws for 29 touchdowns and seven picks. And then last year, we talked about earlier the interception situation, so people are very critical. But we've also talked about some of the problems in the offensive line, and he obviously may have tried to do a little bit too much. But he's got it all going tonight, and it sets him up for the field goal that Hunter Lawrence takes care of on a 40-yard boot. And Texas tacks on three more. It's 45 to 10 on the field goal from Hunter Lawrence. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back with 1309 remaining. University of Texas at Austin so special? Is it the academics? The rich cultural diversity? Is it the open minds and 
curious thinkers that inspire self-discovery. Yes. What starts here changes the world. Friday Night Football isn't just a sport. It's world outside every... Welcome back. Part of the record crowd of 98,053 that are here. 98,053. And what a treat. As you take a look at the running backs, we talked about committee. McGee was 63 yards. Obaniah 16, but he's also got 35 receiving. They both had a touchdown tonight as well. And what about that quarterback? Throw him in there, too. Those numbers are pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That's running back by committee, isn't it? He's over 100 yards. Colt McCoy, 103 on 12 carries. The run game working well for the Longhorns tonight. The tailback and also the quarterback in the, the spread option offense. So the kickoff, Tucker doing the honors. Edgeco at the 10. And the shake a tackler. And finally brought down at the 23. And let's go down to Ahmad. He's got a, another Olympian with him, this time a swimmer in Ricky Barron's. The treats never end here on the University of Texas sideline. We're joined now, uh, just recently coming back from Beijing, Ricky Barron's Olympic gold medalist, 800 free relay. Tell us what it was like, man, to win your first gold medal. Man, it was incredible. First, first Olympics and go away with world record and gold medals. Dream come true. Now, you're an All-American. You are an American record holder, world record holder. What's left for you, man? Gold medal, what, what's left for you to do? Man, NCAA title. That's what we want this year, uh, individual and team. We're going for the big team. Now, let's talk about one of your teammates. Maybe one of the best Olympic performances of all time, Michael Phelps. What are your thoughts? You got a first-hand experience to watch this guy do what he did. What are your thoughts on his performance? That man was incredible, what he did every single session. I mean, I did, I did one event, one session, and then the next morning, and I was dead. He did it session after session after session, and it was just incredible. Now, you were not the only Longhorn over there. Aaron Pearsall, several other Longhorns were there. How was it like, man, to be there with your teammates, guys that you've swam with before? What was that like to experience what you experienced Both with those guys as well? It's 81. great. We have seven people from that former or current Longhorns on that team. And the older pros, I mean, those guys are the, who you've looked up for looked up to the last few years and they helped us out they told us what to do and they, they took care of us and it's great to have teammates like that there well Ricky I, I, I doubt that this will be your last Olympics ladies and gentlemen like I said loaded on the Texas sideline Olympic gold medalists and all guys back to you all right thank you very much <laughs> kind of puts it in perspective he said he did that all two weeks and Talking about Phelps, what do you say? I swam once, swam another time, and I was dead. I swam down the end of the pool. I, I can't even get to the end of the pool. What are you talking about? Uh, I, I can't fathom what Phelps accomplished. Uh, congratulations was, to Ricky Barrett, yes. too, though. And it, it's nice to hear, after all of the success, he's talking about, we want to win an NCAA team championship here. And he didn't hesitate on that, did he? Florida Atlantic. Down 45 to 10, facing a third and 15 from their own 18 as the quarterback, Jeff Van Camp. Back to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. Still in trouble. Flag thrown. Van Camp. Throws this to an open space out of bounds. They're going to have holding inside there, and this is the number two Texas defense pretty much across the board. And Aaron Lewis and uh, Sam Acho in there. Holding. 70 offense, that penalty is declined, fourth down. Navorius Williams called for the penalty, and Texas declining it. We'll get the football back on the fourth down situation. <laughs> Peterson back to punt, scooting back to inside the five yard line. Curtis Brown is the deep man. Double numbers will get you. Obanai, of course, number three as well. But this is Curtis Brown with his back. And this one out of bounds. No opportunity for a return. And Texas, great field position again. 
see what group they bring on. Stay with us with the timeout called 45-10 Longhorn. Welcome back. Texas comfortably leading on college football Saturday with a 45 to 10 and pretty much of a second unit coming in now with 11.52 to go and some valuable playing time. And before they snap the football, flags Red are thrown. Ball, false start. 78 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. David Snow, false start for Texas. And he's a guy that they're very high on. A freshman from Gilmer, Texas, 6'4, 300 pounder. Now, well, true freshman get a chance to play, get a little depth against that offensive line. He's saying, don't just mention my name when I do something wrong. And there's the update on Oklahoma and UT Chattanooga. Weather delay. To, yeah, lightning delay, but up uh, Sooners up comfortably just by, uh, by, by a little bit of 50. Cody Johnson carrying the football. Yeah, you show that Oklahoma score. One thing, Texas. Always looking to see what Oklahoma's doing. Oklahoma's always seeing what Texas are doing. Doesn't Gotta matter. Keep an eye out. It's still August, <laughs> but they're all looking forward to October in Dallas. That yeah. and it doesn't matter who they're playing. Everybody's keeping tabs on their big rival. And this Chattanooga, a uh, one double A opponent for Oklahoma. Yeah, and that was a game that uh, had to be scheduled because Texas, excuse me, Oklahoma. Had a team drop out of their schedule, so that was a, a late ad. I don't think the, the quality of opponent that uh, Joker Stiglion and Bob Stoops would really like to have on the schedule, but uh, had to do that late, and the Texas has had to do that in the past. Here is Johnson. He's got the first down across the 40, down to the 38. Now the Texas schedule, I mean, I don't know, Gary, what it's, I heard a lot of discussions about scheduling, but it's like, there's too many people to serve. Fans want one thing. Broadcasters, we want great games. We want great matchups every week, right? Coaches want W's. They want to get their team set up right. They want athletic, to keep their directors, jobs. <laughs> athletic directors are concerned about finances and Do what that. they're doing, you know. So it isn't like that they're all on the same page all the time, but I, I think for the most part, when you look at Texas, they're generally going to play one big time team every year. Arkansas is that renewing. That is a great rivalry. And then you've got UTEP and Rice that are both from the that's uh, not Conference be, USA, and that's in El Paso. That's not going to be a walk in the park with uh, with Mike Price's team out there. Very, very well coached football team in the, out there in El Paso. And then, of course, you have the defending Sun Belt champions here, so you got a pretty good mix in this case. Childs trying to deliver, and he does. Complete it to Kirkendall, yeah. and that'll be another first down as they get it down near the 25-yard line. Charles out there, a little escapability, no problem for him. Got great wheels, great athlete, and kind of made some made some space with his feet on the edge. You see the, the fake and just in and out. Whoop. Now you see me, now you don't, and it zips it out there. Well, and that's the case there that he might have last year just said, I got one guy and he's 10 yards away from me. I'll just tuck it under. And realizing you still got to work on the throwing game. Different situation here as they cut down toward the sideline. That was well played by, yeah. by Florida Atlantic, stringing that play out. Childs out of Dallas, played at Summit High School, and total offense of just under 4,000 yards as an All-American player. Here's some other scores that we can lay on you as Texas A&M is oh losing to Arkansas. It's a final. That's a final. Wow. Oh well, gosh. Texas fans know Arkansas State came in here last year and didn't lay down and Texas got away with a victory that people were saying that's not very impressive. Steve Roberts is the head coach at Arkansas State. I know that man and he is a fine football coach and wow, that's a but that's, that's definitely a an upset. And definitely and an upset. Not what uh, I think the Aggies under Mike Sherman May not thought they're going to be world beaters this year, but also we're counting on a W there. Earlier today, of course, uh, one has noticed that Pitt got beat by Bowling Green and East Carolina beat Virginia Tech, so a pair of top 25s were knocked off there. Here's Johnson wanting to score again. Bulls his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Yeah, we got a flag on the ground on the outside there, Bill. So 
We'll have to check the flag on this, but a great effort at that time on the outside by Johnson and not gonna be denied with his stiff arm or elbow, whatever you wanna call it, going into the end zone. 5'11", 255 pounds. He is a load. Legal block, 14 offense, 15 yard play, replay, third down. Mm. That's Weber. Andre Weber. Well, we'll take a look, see if we can see it here. Number 14 to be on the right side of your screen. Does he block low? There it is. Yeah, yep. definitely blocks low from the outside. Cannot do that. It's a safety issue. I think it's a good penalty call and negates that. And that's pretty physical running though on the outside. You got Cody Johnson trying to muscle his way in the end zone. The finish was good, but, uh, yeah. but Weber, you know, coming from the outside, perimeter players cannot block below the waist. Definitely a penalty. Eight thirty-one remaining in the ball game, and Texas now has it pushed back, third and thirteen at the twenty-nine-yard line, Man. and a timeout. Yeah, you got a wrong, wrong formation lineup Texas. there, so the Texas is forced to call out. a timeout. So with the game well in hand, Texas though, and now the score is shown to the fans <laughs> on the. Godzillatron, if you will, of Arkansas State defeating Texas A&M. <laughs> like I said, you're in Texas, you keep an eye on Oklahoma, you always keep an eye on the Aggies as well. <laughs> that, to me, that's that's amazing. That is an amazing score. Uh, you know, all they, just everyone coming into the, the, the season thought that Stephen McGee and Javorski Lane and Mike Goodson offensively were really gonna give a spark to the Aggies down there. Mike Sherman, renewed interest. Someone who's been in the uh, the program obviously knows that uh, knows the landscape down at Texas A&M very very well. Worked under R.C. Slocum, former NFL head coach. Wow. Well, the season openers, it, it, they sound like coach speak, but you really have to be nervous. You just don't know. It's the first time you actually see the other guy. Here's one delivered to Kirkendall. There's your touchdown. Kirkendall from Childs and Texas gets six more. Well, is that John Childs' first touchdown pass of his career? Yes, it is. A little special play there. Tosses it up to Kirkendall. I'll congratulate him on the sidelines. Well, this offense is well, is well designed, and it's designed to score. Greg Davis has been running this for a number of years with a number of quarterbacks, and John Childs showing that he's got the ability both with his feet and with his arm to be a very good addition to this Longhorn football team. So Kirkendall, 29 yards on the scoring play, and Ryan Bailey comes on for the point after. So Bailey, a little dinged up, he gets the PAT. Kirkendall gets the touchdown, and Texas rolls 52-10. Never know who's talking about your favorite teams on Rodeo Ford's DFW Sports Beat. Dallas? Yeah. Oh, I love Dallas. Monday and Thursday nights, watch Rodeo Ford's DFW Sports Beat on FSN Southwest. It's the return. John Childs' his first career TD pass as Texas picks up another touchdown. 29 yarder to James Kirkendall. And great opportunity for Texas. To get so many players into the game with legitimate playing time. And 8.24 still to go. And the Longhorns will kick it off. And they've got to be pleased. Malcolm Williams coming in as a receiver, catching football. James Kirkendall. And they're looking for that third and good depth of receiver. And they're finding some guys that are making some plays. Tucker with the kickoff. And Willie Floyd comes back with it. Knocked out of bounds. Around the 30-yard line, and that's where Fort Atlantic will take over. Fort Atlantic, last year, they beat Minnesota. They played at Oklahoma State. They've certainly played Florida. They've gone to a lot of difficult places, and it helped them prepare to end up winning the Sun Belt Conference. And Fort Atlantic, next week, they've got UAB. 
And UAB a loser to Tulsa tonight. And they've also got to go to Michigan State, Minnesota, and end up with the South Florida rival, Florida International, later on. I know it's interesting as Howard Schnellenberg talked about the growth of Florida Division I football and that it used to just be Florida, Florida State, and Miami. And the Johnny come lately, Central Florida, South Florida both made some names, obviously, and now Florida International, Florida Atlantic. And he said, hey, give this thing another five or six years, and there won't be much difference between any of us. I think, I, he I may think not be right there, but there's enough players in Florida to supply these teams. There's no doubt there are players in Florida. You know, Florida, Texas, a couple of states that are hotbeds for recruiting, and Coach Schnellenberger talking to us about, you know, how between Tampa and Orlando. They got that little corridor from uh, Interstate 4 that goes through there. South there, 300 plus players signed Division I scholarships in that state. And just a lot of athletes out there. And you know, it's interesting, we also talked to Coach Nord, Gary Nord, who used to be the head coach at the University of Texas, El Paso. And I asked him, I said, Coach Nord, give me a little, little, little uh, synopsis of recruiting in the state of Texas and recruiting in the state of Florida. And talk about the athletes and really how do you compare and contrast them. And, he said the, the players in Texas have, you know, some of the facilities and things, weight training that they that they have, and they're they're more developed perhaps than some of the kids in Florida. He says they're great athletes in Florida, but overall, he says the guys that come out of the high schools in Texas are a little better prepared and ready to play college football. Yeah, he said the support system is much better in Texas, and uh, interesting that in a guy like that who would know now that he has been down in that part of the country be able to compare the two and a tip of the cap to the, the high school coaches in the state of Texas and and uh, even though football is huge in both states the support given here according to that man is uh, much greater and certainly you've seen it pay off for UT here is the kick as Curtis Brown is the deep man and Peterson's kick is taken by Brown and Texas again great field position at the 44 after a three and out for Florida Atlantic. Well it's looked pretty good for Texas tonight. What about over the course of the year and the challenges and a chance to find out what Mac Brown thinks. The pundits would motivate the guys because they're acting like our guys can't get done what our standard what our goals should be. And uh, what I've seen over our 10 years at the University of Texas is our guys do better with challenges than they do compliments. So I really like where we are right now. The league's better than ever. Our schedule's tougher than ever. We're playing nine bowl teams. We have a mix of inexperience and experience. But at the same time, they are working really, really hard because they're tired of hearing that they're not the best team around. And that can be a motivator. And certainly, uh, well, you get used to those those being on top and yeah win a national championship just a few short years ago 2005 and wow you know but you know these 10 win seasons they just keep adding up but you they, they want more here at Texas they want 11 12 national championship uh, type of uh, type of winning seasons and they are so precious and now another quarterback getting into the act here as the Longhorns get a chance to get everybody involved and Still plenty of time here as well with 534 remaining in this one. Sherrod Harris, and, and again, he's not void of talent either. I mean, nobody that's playing quarterback at this school is. And Harris is just in the difficult position to be a behind Colt McCoy and John Childs. <laughs> just kind of how the depth chart shakes out, but chance to play, chance to learn, chance to be a part of this program, and you never know when, you're, when your number's going to be called. So you got to take these opportunities and make the most of them, and and Mr. Harris, I'm sure, is mindful of that. Takes a snap here and hands it off. And Texas, Jeremy Hills running the football. Hills at the 49-yard line. You know, Hills. Six foot 187, freshman out of Houston, uh, Leif Elson. You know, some of the stars here for Texas, we've talked offensively about uh, Colt McCoy and Oban Yaya, how he's run real well. And, also, there, there, are, there are other tailback that's run pretty well in this game tonight, Vondrell McGee. Defensively, Brian Arapko, he's got to be the guy, the bell cow up there, and kind of didn't, didn't have a you know, huge game tonight, but he was definitely a force up there as that offense, the defensive front did a good job against Florida Atlantic. Trevor Gerland to punt it away here on a fourth and five at the 49. 
down inside the 20 before it bounces out of bounds. See where they spot the football, and that's where the Owls will get it back here with 4.08 remaining. And good plays on special teams. Three phases of a football game, and offense, defense, special teams, and most times if you if you win two of them, Bill, you're probably going to win a football game, and Texas getting it done also special teams-wise, getting a, a block punt, Earl Thomas getting a in a block punt and they wind up turning it around in, into points. And take a look at the coach Muschamp, his first ball game as a defense coordinator for the University of Texas. High energy guy. You know, when we talked to him on our conference call, I was I was extremely impressed with uh, with Will Muschamp and just he's almost encyclopedic in nature as far as how he talks about his system, his players, the other team's players, and just a smart, sharp guy. Very, uh, very, very energetic and. Uh, all the guys as they talk about him and the energy that he brings to their to their defense is uh is they're all they're all, all praising him very much so well his defense has done a number tonight 287 yards of offense is what Fort Atlantic has generated but when the game was on the line they pretty well controlled things after a few mishaps early in the passing game Willie Floyd is getting the bulk of the carries here for Fort Atlantic he is stopped at the 34 yard line after a nice pickup on the previous run well, must champs his, his resume is, is, is pretty impressive last couple of years at uh, at Auburn as a defense coordinator he worked in the National Football League as a coordinator he's got that experience and bringing that here to Texas you just got a blend of it and and it still comes down to energy and excitement and, uh, and how you translate that to players and get them to act and put them in positions where they can succeed on the field. That's what a, a coach does. And I know that uh, Coach Muschamp feels very much so that that's his job responsibility out there. Van Camp completes that one to number 19. Thick, the second, well, I got to about five yards on the play as Thick the receiver on the play. You know, when a young secondary did a bill, you know, talking about uh, Texas in the secondary started a couple of freshmen at the safety spots and how are they going to play who's going to replace the the stalwarts that have been here you know the Michael Huffs the the Griffin brothers those guys that are not here any longer Ross and on a corner at a cornerback spot those guys when they came in all pretty much all together they were they were a bunch of guys that played at the University of Texas in the secondary for a long time under longtime defensive back coach Dwayne Aquino who has really worked that group into a of a special group and they feel like this group right here together with a lot of youth and a little blend of experience but a lot of youth they feel like they've got similar athleticism and coach Akeen has done a great job of grooming these cornerbacks and he's had uh, cornerbacks drafted six out of the last seven years or something of that nature to, to have some successful players move on to the National Football League great recruiting tool that's for sure and certainly Take care of business here tonight. And after the incompletion by Van Camp, a fourth and five of the 39. And Curtis Brown again is deep for the punt from Keegan Peterson. And Brown get a chance up. He'll just take it there on the fair catch at on the 17 yard line. And yeah, a little power there. Colt McCoy, yeah. <laughs> we'll put some numbers up there to give you an idea of just how strong he was. 222 passing. Look at that. 22 of 25. 103 rushing on just 12 carries. And seven different receivers. I, I really don't know what more he was trying to think. Okay, we got Kirkendall bobbled one pass. Shipley dropped another one that he will catch 99 out of 100. And I think the other was one a long ball that Cosby almost made a grab on where McGee made a, a terrific throw to get it to him. I mean, every ball was on target. <laughs> you know, he kind of made some of the, the Florida Atlantic players look like pretty poor athletes because with his feet and his athleticism, just getting around him, avoiding the rush. Uh, I, I think he's really playing with another gear. I think he's he's heightened his athletic performance. He's come into the season, you know, uh, in great shape and ability. And I think that uh, he is ready to have a fantastic season. 30 first downs for Texas tonight as Harris hands this one off to Cody Johnson. Big boy can move now. And he is uh, he tired. He's like, hey, I may have gotten the first touchdown of the game, but I'm ready to roll. Well, you did see the stiff arm around the edge. Watch this. If we get a replay of this, watch the stiff arm that he does on the defensive end and sticks him on the ground. Oh, I don't want to come out, coach. Don't, don't, don't be taking me out. <laughs> 136 to go. He's got nine carries for 36 yards and a score. 
Johnson, Obaniah, Shipley, McCoy, McGee, Irby, Lawrence, and Kirkendall scoring the touchdowns tonight. How about that? Probably a first down here. It looked like a pretty good, clean game. The one injury on the on, that we saw here tonight was uh, offensive guard Charlie Tanner left the ball game with looks like a little ankle problem, so had to take him off the field. Hopefully, he's going to have a speedy recovery. But really, for both teams, Bill looked like a pretty clean football game. Not a lot of not a lot of physical problems out there. A couple of guys might have had a little heat-related stuff, but not too much. So, Britt Mitchell, the injured player, and. Hopefully he is going to be all right out of Kilgore. Texas. 52 to 10 here with just 131 remaining in the ball game. And they will help Britt Mitchell off. Yeah, I think when Texas the schedule we, we showed you there. Okay, UTEP, Arkansas, Rice. They can weather that. The real test comes, obviously, with Oklahoma and Dallas is always the big indicator. But I look at at Colorado before that game, and then after OU, they host Missouri. After those three games, you're going to pretty well know just what you're headed for here in Austin. Not those others aren't important, but that is a most difficult three-game stretch. And there's nothing easy on that. No. Uh, <laughs> what about these guys down here, Kansas? They won 11 ball games, 12 ball games last year. And, and that's why, if you want to say they're under the radar, no, the schedule, playing those North teams where you alternate with those three teams every two years. Mm -hmm. You know, this year they've got Kansas and, and Missouri and Missouri and Colorado. You know, last year it was Iowa State, K-State, Nebraska. And granted, K-State got them, but you take a look at it, you, you'd rather have that role. So that is as much a reason for the concerns as any. Start, 68, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Now, 112 remaining, and they'll do it all over again here as they push it back five yards. I think overall, Max got to be pleased with his football team tonight, offensively, defensively. They did a nice job on the defensive side, containing a pretty, pretty salty offense. I think that Rusty Smith and company, they're going to they're gonna continue to get better and improve, and they're definitely going to contend in that Sun Belt Conference. There's no doubt about that. I would agree. And the handoff again from Childs. And that'll do it as Hills carries the football. And... They have one more play. We'll see if they just do it or down the football. But Texas, 52, Fort Atlantic 10. And the Longhorns, and Mac Brown, in front of a record crowd of 98,053, most ever to see a football game in Texas. And what a success with the stadium expansion and the debut of the 2008 Longhorns. Seven seconds in Childs. We'll take a snap for a final play and another flag. Uh, we've got an offensive ball start, so we're going to get the ball snapped. Stick it in time. your pocket, ref. <laughs> Enough's ball enough. Start. 88 <laughs> offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. He's doing his job. He'd be downgraded if he didn't do that. He's <laughs> they grade these grade these uh, referees. They got to do those things. Every now, play. I beg your pardon. I think I said Childs. That's obviously Harris that is out here wrapping things up. Is we've lost our focus a little bit too. <laughs> But a big night for Texas as the Longhorns take care of business here in a season opening win. And Mac Brown win number 190 in his coaching career and beats the veteran Howard Schnellenberger in the Florida Atlantic Isles 52 to 10 as the Longhorns very impressive over the Isles of Florida Atlantic and Colt McCoy leading the way as the defense took a little bit of time to find its way, but controlled things as well. 
And the Longhorns with over 500 yards of total offense, 503 to 292 in the total offense story here tonight. Yeah, I think overall they played an exceptional football game. Colt McCoy was definitely on his game tonight, running the football, throwing the football almost perfect in the first half. Just put up some pretty impressive numbers and got everybody in the action tonight. Threw the ball around, spread it around, spread the wealth around. Number of players uh, doing a great job offensively, and I think the defense as well played played decent for the majority of the ball game. Had a couple of drives there where Florida Atlantic moved the football against the Longhorns, but overall it was a good night, clean, healthy night for for everyone involved, except for Charlie Tanner, Looks like he left with an ankle injury, but. The Longhorns got to be pleased with this, and I know the Mac Brown's got to be pleased with how his football team performed. No doubt. We'll have a chance to hear from him as well and find out his exact thoughts as Texas led this one 14-0 at the quarter, 28-10 at the half. Hausler's 20-yard TD pass reception from Smith gave the Owls a little bit of life before intermission, but then Texas, if there was any doubt that they would put him away, McGee on a seven yard run to start the third quarter just a minute four for the drive that went the length of the field and Colt McCoy engineered that and it, it was just a matter of how much before Texas would lock this one up and put it away. Enjoy the lies of Texas here with the Longhorns winning it. Texas 52 to 10 over the Owls of Florida Atlantic the defending Sunbelt champions pounded by the Longhorns here and about Brooks is with the head coach Mac Brown. The Horns start out 1 and 0 behind a great defensive performance and also offensive performance. Coach Brown what are your thoughts on this first game you got your first one under your belt. Well it, it usually depends on how you stop the run how you run the ball and get some balance and kicking game and I thought we played near a perfect second half so really proud of this team Florida Atlantic was well prepared Rusty Smith's a great player he's as advertised and uh, I walked over and told him that after the game they've got a good team they'll probably win their conference again but I'm really proud of our start tonight got a lot to work on but this was a pretty good performance for an opener. Cole McCoy rushing for over 100 yards, passing efficiently and effectively. What are your thoughts on your star quarterback? Well, we, we did a great job of balancing our offense, but also not turning the football over and forcing a lot of turnovers was really, really big to us. And I was proud to see John Charles get on track with some passes, too. Coach, congratulations. Look forward to seeing you again sometime. Thanks, Amad. Take care, gentlemen. All right. Thank you, Amad. And thanks again. And congratulations to Mac Brown and the Longhorns as... Hard to argue with that assessment in the second <laughs> half. No, they were pretty efficient and uh, pretty clean in the second half. He was happy about everything they did offensively, defensively, and just a great night for the for for uh, Texas to get started here. So the Longhorns with a opening win, and we'll send it right back down to Ahmad one more. He's got a couple more guests. Yes, we do. We have the stars of the game. First and foremost, uh, the quarterback, the leader of this offense, Coach. You were impressive tonight. You rushed for over 100 yards, passed effectively and efficiently. Was it was it because VY was here? Was it the extra fans or what, my friend? Uh, VY is the greatest at that. You know, he he was the best that ever played here. Um, but tonight I was just doing what they told me to do. We go against this defense every day, so it, it was just like coming out and practicing, basically, just going, uh, doing our thing. So I felt like we executed well offensively, did what Coach Davis told us to do, and uh, give all the credit to the O line. They played great tonight. How does this offense improve from a good effort tonight? How do you get back on track and get prepared to go into El Paso next week? We just got to continue to stay focused, continue to keep working every day, come back up here tomorrow, watch film, correct some things that we did wrong, uh, and, and keep going. Uh, you know, we got UTEP on Saturday, so there's no breaks now. We're, we're in rhythm. Great game, Colt. Brian Arakpo, 
senior stud, defensive end. Had a great game again today. I saw you were cramping up out there, man. How, how were you dealing with that heat, man? Man, it, it was kind of tough at first. You know, the cramps kind of get you in your first game, but it's something you got to get used to. I mean, it wasn't nothing serious. Just a little cramp or whatever. Just got to walk it off and try to, you know. It was funny because I, I kind of I made, made a pressure and then caught a cramp on the same play. So it's kind of ironic, but you just got to live with it. First game with uh, Coach Muschamp at oh, yeah. the helm. What are your thoughts on this defense the first time out and, and holding this team to 10 points? Um, I thought we did pretty well. Um, um, obviously, we gave them some big plays. We can fix that. We're going to go back in the film room and watch. But, I mean, besides that, I feel like we played really physical. I feel like everybody's on the same page. And just a couple busts, you know. We just got to fix some big plays. But other than that, it was a great team effort, man. Um, you know, Florida Atlantic talking all that trash, you know. But uh, I guess we backed it up. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of my uh, coach and stuff. Indeed, y'all did. Brian and Rackpo, thanks for your time. Guys, back to you. All right. Thanks very much, my Brooks. And thanks for the UT players as well to share their thoughts on this season opening victory. Domination. We'll have more when we come back to Royal Texas Memorial Stadium.